Site of the first of a record 28 bowl games. The New Orleans Bowl, just one of two non-BCS bowls that pits conference champions against each other. Cincinnati overcame a two and five start to claim a share of the Conference USA title. And for the second year in a row, North Texas won the Sun Belt, going six and zero oh in conference play. Now let's go inside the Bearcats locker room with Rob Stone. Hey, I'm obviously very quiet in the locker room right now, but team very upbeat, very motivated just moments ago. Conference USA officials told me yesterday, hey, when Cincinnati was in the bowl game last year, very tense, very tight, not so this year. Very loose in the locker room, going through stretching as the players were walking out earlier. They were yelling into our camera, hey, time to kick off this bowl season on the right foot. Pam? And we will do that kickoff coming up from the Superdome, but first, let's take it back to the studio and Reese Davis. Pam, thank you very much. From the Crescent City tonight, a couple of old Missouri Valley Conference foes getting together in Cincinnati and North Texas. Reese Davis here with Trev Alberts and Mark May. And guys, kicking off the bowl season, the first of 28 postseason games, and occasionally you'll hear the cynics say, too many bowl games. But Mark, tell me what it does for the players and what it does for the program. Well, there aren't too many bowl games. To me, there's not enough bowl games. Growing up in upstate New York, when I was being recruited by a lot of colleges, I used to watch television. I used to watch the players play in bowl games, enjoy themselves, have a lot of fun. These games are very important to the coaching staff because they get a couple of extra weeks to prepare their players in practice. And for recruits, they want to see those teams on television, those guys out there enjoying themselves. What I like about bowl season is the protect, uh, perception versus reality of these games. I remember when I was at Nebraska, it seemed like we were always playing playing Florida State and Miami and it was always like we were the corn boys the farm boys who weren't very athletic played with a lot of heart we're, we were going to go down to play Florida we're, State we're going to play this Miami the perception or the reality <laughs> part this is the perception <laughs> part then okay. we go down to Florida State we're 17 point underdogs and all of a sudden we beat them I mean if it wasn't for the officials giving Florida State a few calls we absolutely dominated that Get game over it. and Get I think that's it. what it's all about in bowl season you've you see already, those different things you've already been reprimanded by the big eight at the time for that type of comment and you're just going to fly in the face of that eight-year-old reprimand or do it again? Absolutely. All right, well, let's, let's talk about our game coming up, Cincinnati and North Texas. Cincinnati, a little bit of a change in philosophy late in the season. You look at their last seven games, Gadouli only threw more than 35 passes one time, a direct contrast from the early in the season. Yeah, and that's why they're playing so well right now offensively. I mean, early in the season, they weren't a two-dimensional offense. They were very one-dimensional, just throwing the ball all the time, like you said. DeMarco McCleskey's made this team very good at running back. They're averaging 24 carries or getting him the football. And what that does when you're two dimensionals all of a sudden you're not turning the ball over Gino had 16 interceptions early throughout the season he had 16 interceptions but in the last seven games only four interceptions the reason is Mark of course when you're two dimensional it makes it much more difficult for the defense North Texas has a nice defense well they have a tremendous defense for Gino Gadulli he better watch out this defense is ranked ninth nationally they're third in total defense only giving up 14 points a game but here's the key about this defense a defensive tackle Brandon Kennedy 5'11 315 pounds that may shock you, but he's second in the nation in tackles for losses with 24. So the offensive line of Cincinnati, beware. Be very aware of the defensive tackle. Why does that shock you? What, you can't be over 300 pounds if he's under yeah, six foot? 5'11", he's really about 5'9". <laughs> they said, have at five eleven. They said when he was at 290, he could dunk a basketball. Oh, come on. Uh, he, got, well, he looks like I don't a fire plug out there. anymore. He's I getting neck. You know, like Kennedy's brother, he's certainly very good. When we come back at halftime, we're going to try to decipher whether it was the AM, PM, or the snooze button that kept Chris Ricks from <laughs> missing his exam and missing the Sugar Bowl. And here come the Bearcats, just 2-11 and 11 in dome. So try to turn it around in a few moments. Two trips to it for North Texas, who lost his game last year to Colorado State, but the Mean Green is back, and they will take on a Cincinnati Bearcat team playing in its third straight bowl for the first time in school history. The Bearcats, the co-conference USA champs, taking on North Texas, who for the second straight year won the Sun Belt. Hello, and welcome to the Big Easy, Pam Ward, along with another Big Easy, Chris yeah. Spielman. And Chris, this is going to be a great matchup between a potent offense and the stingy defense of North Texas. Yeah, you take a look at North Texas and their defense, and one guy you got to point out and look for is Brandon Kennedy, 5'9", 315 pounds. 24 tackles for loss and nine sacks. Folks, that's incredible from playing from an inside defensive tackle position. On the other side, Gino Gadulli. What's he done? He spreads the ball around, throwing for over 3,000 yards. He's the leader of that offense. Quite a good player. Keep your eye on him tonight. And the leader of North Texas is their head coach, Daryl Dickey. He is standing by with the third member of our team, Rob Stone. 
Well, Coach, how do you plan on stopping Cincinnati's new huddle offense? Well, we're just going to try to slow them down, play our style of defense. They'll probably make some plays on us because they do against everybody, but we've got to keep them from making too many big plays. If you had to put together a game plan to nullify your big nose tackle, Brandon Kennedy, what would you do? Probably do what everybody else does, double team him or hold him. Coach, we appreciate <laughs> your time. Good luck. Thank you. And the double team him or hold him is really a philosophy that you've heard talking to uh, Talking to some of the other coaches who have had to go against him, and North Texas played a very good non-conference schedule this season, starting off against Texas. Right now, the bowl season about to begin. The bowls have indeed Begun. A record 28 bowls this year, and this is the first one. Cincinnati playing just 11 days after its last game against East Carolina, which made them bowl eligible. North Texas won the toss and deferred, so Cincinnati in all white with the black helmets. And there's the onside kick. We saw North Texas practice that a lot in yesterday, but Cincinnati comes up with it. Derek Ross covers it up, so Cincinnati gets great field position. Gino Gadouli, only a sophomore, has several Bearcat passing records running this spread offense. They run well out of it. DeMarco McCleskey over 1,200 yards on the ground, and John Olinger is a weapon. Yeah, John averages over 20 yards a catch. They want to get him involved in the game early. He's their deep threat. So Cincinnati coming in seven and six on the season, six and two in Conference USA, and there is Olinger, really one of three receivers that Gadouli loves to find. And they take over on North Texas's side of the field. Gadouli going up in the air right away into double coverage, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Don McGee. And McGee stumbles out to the 12-yard line. Great start for that defense. Well, let me tell you, I like the call by going with the surprise onside kick, which we saw them work on in practice yesterday. Hey, you got nothing to lose. And I like Cincinnati's call. Hey, we got great field position. Go deep. North Texas is ready for it. McGee, great position, playing his free safety, playing center field. Does a great job of bringing the ball in. Nice return. And Andrew Smith is the very young quarterback, just a freshman who goes for North Texas playing his best football the last two games. Kevin Galbraith over 1,100 yards in this run-oriented offense. George Marshall and Jamel Branch have 53 of the total 89 receptions for the Mean Green. So one play for Cincinnati, and now here comes North Texas. Galbraith gets it right away and gets absolutely nothing. Take a look at the offensive line that gave up only 16 sacks. Nick Zuniga is a two-time first-team all Sunbelt Conference player. Keep your eye on Andy Brewster coming in about 245. That's on the light side for an offensive lineman. So it could be a good day for Antoine Peak. He has Cincinnati records for most sacks in a game, season, and career. Trent Cole, explosive. One word, explosive. There's Antoine Peaks. He'll bring it now. Cole, actually, when they put him in the starting lineup, that's when Rick Minner thought that his team really started to click defensively. And once again, Galbraith gets it, showing some of that speed as a flag flies in the North Texas backfield. Galbraith close to the first down marker. Blue Adams made the stop. Yeah, J.R. Randall had a nice tackle. The only problem is he's on the offensive line. And as we all know, you're not allowed to do that. But that's a great cutback by Galbraith. That's something to keep your eye on. Cincinnati's got to play gap sound defense to keep this young man in contain. Sometimes you get over aggressive because, you know, in the, in the trenches, you're trying to battle for supremacy right off the bat. You want to show how tough he is. You want to show how tough you are. You go at it pretty hard. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot, repeat the down. ACC crew here today, and that negates that seven-yard gain by Galbraith. Willis Edwards starts at middle linebacker for Cincinnati, but we will see a lot of sophomore Jamar Enzor, who actually got more snaps at that position during the year. And Blue Adams returned two of his team-high six interceptions for touchdowns this season. Franklin Calicott is in for Doug Monahan, missing yet another game with a high ankle sprain. Three receivers in on second right, and 16. Big screen down. Three-step drop. And he gets his man. That's Jamel Branch. 
That's big for Andrew Smith now. I'll tell you why. He's a redshirt freshman quarterback. For him to be in his first bowl game, a nice call by Ramon Flanagan, the offensive coordinator from North Texas, to get him involved early, give him a nice little three-step drop versus zone, deliver the ball on time. You got a good play and a manageable third down. Now third and five, so 11 yards on that last play. Two tight ends in for North Texas. They very rarely throw to their tight ends. Branch in motion, but they go to Galbraith, and he is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. So they go to their bread and butter, and Galbraith, who was second in the Sun Belt Conference in all-purpose yards, stopped by Willis Edwards. And you know, there's a fault to being too conservative now. When Cincinnati, we talked to A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator, they're playing nine people against these guys up in the box. You know, we hear that eight in the box, so Cincinnati says, okay, we're bringing nine in the box because they feel like they can match up with the corners on the outside edge people for North Texas. Their philosophy is to make Andrew Smith beat them, not Galbraith, and that time Galbraith did not as he was stopped on that third down play. Brad Cadlebar in, he shanks that punt, and Cincinnati, for the second straight time, will get excellent field position starting in North Texas territory around the 47. That's only a 25-yard punt. The Bearcats have it when we come back to New Orleans. Gino Gadouli has thrown one pass today, and it was picked off by Don McGee, and now Cincinnati in good field position. You think, why not? Maybe do it again, Chris. Well, they got a little different setup now. They're in a shotgun, but it's a two-back formation. Richard Hall is coming in. Richard Hall, very talented, but back up to DeMarco McCleskey, second leading rusher on this team. Three wide receivers, and they go with the handoff inside. And bottled up right away is McCleskey by that mean green defense. A flag flies late. There's Kennedy. Yeah, mean green was ready for that play. They know that's a running formation. Why they were ready? Because the, the corner for North Texas comes up and gets in position to stop the play. Jeremy Pearl. Lock below the waist against Cincinnati will negate that two-yard gain by McCleskey. They were, they were playing run right away. Now, what, if you're Cincinnati, you see that, and they run that again. What you got to do is audibleize when that corner comes up and shows Illegal blitz. Illegal block below the waist by the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat the day. Well, that's a huge penalty. We already showed you the skill players, and now the offensive line for Cincinnati. Kurt Doolin, first team all-conference USA. This team averages 30 points per game. The defense for North Texas only gives up about 14 and a half points per game. There is Brandon Kennedy, number 92, the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year and also Player of the Year, period. Playing at about 310, played at about 330 last year. A lot of guys in the box for North Texas. They dropped some off on first and 25. Gadouli going underneath and completing that to John Olinger. The senior from Hazard, Kentucky, picks up 10. Taylor Casey is the leading tackler on this North Texas defense, actually second in tackles in the entire Sun Belt Conference. And we already saw Don McGee do his thing with the interception. He's very flashy. Now five interceptions to lead this team. He's known as Neon Don, the team wearing all green for the first time in history. He actually wanted to wear green socks and yeah, green he wanted shoes. To go, he wanted to go all green. It looked like <laughs> Martians out there. They went all green. But Daryl Dickey said no way, so they... Just going with the regular stuff. Four receivers in now for Gadouli again, chipping away. And Ty Keith picks it up and stumbles for what should be the first down. That is a 17-yard gain. So Cincinnati in two plays overcomes that first and 25. Yeah, in order for this quick receiver screen to work, you've got to have athletic offensive linemen to get downfield right there. You'll see a guy get down, get a nice block. Good job of all the offensive linemen getting downfield and one tackle away from breaking that. Well executed play. Good speed by offensive linemen getting down there. Ty Keith second in career receptions at the University of Cincinnati behind Ladaris Van, his active teammate. So now first down and an inside handoff that goes absolutely nowhere. McCleskey meets Chris McIver and yeah. loses five. Yeah, Chris McIver just took him to the dark side. <laughs> and I don't know if he likes it on a dark side because that's a nice hit because he gets off the ball. It's a little kind of a counter trap play. He blows up the blocker and makes a tackle. That's great for not giving one for one, coming in, reading the play, bring your feet, close the game for the ball, and all of the above. That's what he did. All of that on one play for McIver, who is, was second team all Sun Belt Conference this year, making his 33rd straight start today. 
Second and 15, four receivers for Kadulwi. Going underneath to McCleskey. And the running back gets hit hard after picking up about eight. Chris Hurd with the knock. Yeah, Ken, you'll see. Now, that's when Cincinnati can get a lot of yards because they have athletic offensive linemen that can get downfield on blocks. Chris Hurd does a nice job from his linebacker position coming up and making a nice open field tackle. And when I can hear pads hit up here, I know that's a good solid hit. We are quite a ways from the field here at the Superdome. Here's a third and eight. Cincinnati second in the conference this year and much better in third down conversions in games in which they won the latter part of the season when they won five of their last six. Four receivers, three to Kaduli's left. That's where he's looking all the way. And a great stretch by Olinger. Goes up, brings it down. It'll be first and goal, Bearcats. Two reasons why the play works. First of all, he gets outstanding protection by his offensive line. And what he does now, he looks off into the flat. When he looked off to the flat receiver, the whole zone for North Texas jumps that way. You see the great protection right there. He looked off and pumped. The whole zone jumped that way. Then he finds Olinger sitting in the curl, being patient. Gino's patient and delivers a strike. Olinger is the big play guy. He's 27 yards on that catch, his second catch of this game. And it is first and goal for the Bearcats from the six. Cincinnati scoring 81% of the time. It gets in the red zone. This is unusual. And Gino Gadulli gets absolutely nowhere on that play. Big Brandon stuffing it up in the middle. Yeah, Gino, Gino's an adequate runner and moves around. He's not going to make a living running the football, but he's adequate. And that's a big red zone play as witnessed right here in this very building on Sunday when the Minnesota Vikings scored on a two-point conversion with Dante Culpepper. Brandon Kennedy right there, nicknamed Booger. <laughs> How about that? 5'10", maybe. No, he's 5'10", yeah. maybe. Second and goal. Four receivers in. Kadooley this time throws it. Under pressure, gets it underneath to Ty Keith for the touchdown. Cincinnati's on the board first. Well, for North Texas, what you got to start doing is reading that screen pass now. Because they're getting their offensive alignment down. And how do you stop that play? If your outside people aren't going to make the play, then you need to have your defensive line read the offensive alignment leaving the box and start chasing the ball. North Texas defensive line is not chasing the ball. That's why Cincinnati's been successful on the screen. Jonathan Ruffin, who is from nearby Metairie, Louisiana, comes in and knocks home the extra point. And Cincinnati takes a 7-0 lead. Ty Keith catching a six-yard touchdown pass in the Bearcats. Break on top. Ty Keith has caught his fourth touchdown pass of the season. Boy, really a three-headed monster. Gino Gadouli has three wide receivers, all of whom are seniors, between Keith, Olinger, and Van. And 45 catches for Keith coming in was the least of them, and now it's up to 47. Yeah, so 45 catches is a lot, especially when you're spreading the ball around. And again, Gino Gadouli makes good decisions. Threw an interception right on the first play of the game for UUC. Didn't panic, comes back and stays calm, runs the offense, delivers the ball. Back to went five for five on that drive after the interception. North Texas gets it back. Cut as Jamel Branch returns the kickoff. And does a good job as he is pushed out of bounds around the 30. A flag is down. It was actually two offsetting personal fouls on the extra point try before. So this ACC crew has been busy early. Legal block against North Texas will push them back a ways. Daryl Dickey, the Gilly head coach here. The back on the return by the kicking team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So they'll start around the 20. An ESPN primetime NFL doubleheader comes your way this weekend. Saturday at 8.30 Eastern, it's the Eagles and Cowboys. Started off with NFL primetime at 8 Eastern on Saturday. Then on Sunday at 8.30 Eastern, Super Bowl champion Patriots take on the Jets. You can catch this also on ESPN Deportes. First watch NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime football. And those Miami Dolphins had a big win over the weekend. Well, they did. Beating Oakland. Yeah, it was a huge win for them. And the more Jay Fielder gets uh, back into groove coming off the thumb injury, the better chance they have. They, for Miami to go into the playoffs, so they need to have home field advantage, in my opinion. That heat helps them in December. You see New England breathing down their neck. So a big game on Sunday night between the Pats and the Jets. Down 7-0. Here comes the mean green Galbraith. 
not much. Jamar Enzor, the guy who shares that middle linebacking spot with Willis Edwards, makes the stop, and Galbraith loses a yard. Wood, Texas started off, quite frankly, miserably to this season. They're 7-5, and 1-5 and five to start things off. Then they got into Sunbelt play and ran the table. The three shutout victories, by the way, tied for best in Division 1A with the University of Texas. Yeah, it's outstanding defense the whole year, and that's kind of the glue that's held them together now for North Texas to get this running game going. Look, I'm a believer that in, in today's day and age, you've got to throw the ball to set up the run. They have too many people on the line of scrimmage in the box for you to see. You've got to throw the ball. Galbraith on the pitch. Makes a nifty move, evades one tackler, and is stopped down after about a gain of four. North Texas is a team that almost runs the ball exclusively. They run to set up the pass. The Cincinnati coaches like to do it the other way around, the pass to set up the run, but this is not a potent offense. They only average 19 points a game scoring, and Andrew Smith was a kid who was kind of thrown into the fire very early. Well, again, I believe they, if they're going to get into this football game, you have to loosen up the defense somehow. You need to throw the ball on first down. Smith in his last two games of the regular season starting to play better, but now third and seven, five receivers in for him. And he goes underneath, and that is short hop to George Marshall. And Smith and company will head to the bench early again. That's a good job by Cincinnati's defense and all the DBs. No deep threats. They all sit down at the sticks and make get a nice break on the football. Good pressure by that defensive line. All four of the boys from UC came with some intentions. And it rattled Smith enough to one hop it. And Brad Adlebar's first punt was not good at 25 yards. And he's in again. Releasing this one from around the three. Better job this time as Ty Keith retreats all the way back to his 28. A terrific special teams tackle by Mark Keith Knowlton. 56-yard punt. Knowlton pushed him one yard back. Flag is down. Flag down again on this play, as that was a terrific punt by Cadlebar, the guy who's averaging about 42 yards a kick. Gets congratulations on that 56-yarder. Yeah, he needed to get a big kick off there to help them out with field position. UC started with great field position, their first two possessions. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, media timeout. And that's us, so we'll take it. Cincinnati gets the ball back. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Louisiana's Audubon Golf Trail. Great golf, among other things. And by Jeep, the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. Cincinnati hoping to celebrate a bowl victory, third straight bowl. They lost the Motor City Bowl the last two seasons up in Pontiac and coming down to, we've got just gorgeous weather here in New Orleans. Temperatures in the mid 70s, blue skies, and they're hoping that they can go away with a victory. Good dueling, and that is wide open. He hits his tight end, Dennis Hart, and Hart's gonna pick up between eight and nine on that play. Let's take a look at that last drive and Gadouli redeeming himself for the interception on the first play. Yeah, the other thing they're doing well, Pam, is once they catch the ball, they're turning into running backs and getting good yak yards, yards after catch. And the offensive line is doing a great job of getting downfield, blocking people in space, springing those receivers for big plays on the screens. And Gadouli, hard to believe that he is just a sophomore. Six straight completions for him. And that one interception as he went for the home run ball on the first play that did not hurt the Bearcats. Two tight ends in for Cincinnati, but they go with the running play. And stopped in his tracks is McCleskey. Brandon Kennedy making yet another stop. New Orleans, Louisiana, the site of the second annual New Orleans Bowl. And Cincinnati, the Conference USA co-champions taking on North Texas, who won the Sun Belt. They had one common opponent, and that was Texas Christian, Cincinnati beat TCU in overtime, and 
North Texas lost to them. Total yards this, so far decidedly in favor of the Bearcats, who lead on a six-yard touchdown pass from Gadouli to Ty Keep. Third and one. A non-balanced line down there. They've run in an extra offensive tackle, and it pays off for them. Big, big hole for DeMarco McCleskey as he gets it out to the 38-yard line, picked up 11 when he only needed one. They did a good job of bringing in extra people right here, and you'll see it right here. When you run the, when you run the play, they got an offensive tackle right here. They want to get him outflanked and get a helmet on a helmet. They do a nice job of clearing people out. There's a good kickout block coming off on a combo. Guys staying on their blocks. McCleskey staying patient, hitting a hole downhill. It's a great job blocking. This is the offensive tackle. This Clint Stickton comes in, does a good job of clearing and coming off the combo block. That's tough to do. On first down with play action, Gadouli wants it all. He's going deep, has his man, and it is just overthrown. Olinger a couple of steps behind it. Well, he had him. A little rough in the passer action going back here, too. Flag is down in the backfield. Gadouli got nicked up earlier in the season. Roughing the passer by the defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Darrell Dickey's defense among the best in the NCAA, but too aggressive this time, it costs them. You see right here, it's a good play fake. mccleskey has been involved, now he's gonna go deep, the ball's gone, boom. He tried to hold him up though, that's not blatant. I mean, that's a, you know, he's gotta be able to have a little better body control and don't wrap him up. He gave him a little head face, a little head face right to the chest. <laughs> then he tried to hold him up. He should have held him up first and Chris McIver instead of giving the head face. But instead he went in and with the head face, he gets the 15 yard penalty. And we've had quite a few flags already. It's the third penalty against North Texas. And once again, Cincinnati finds itself in mean green territory. It's a check with me. He's out of the line of scrimmage. And he gives it to McCleskey in the backfield. And he is stopped by Jonas Buckles after a three-yard gain. Tell you what they do, they'll look and they'll find the safety and they'll run the play either one way or the other. He'll call which way he wants the play to go. That's a good job of communicating. Cincinnati does now. They'll get the play from the sidelines. It's a no huddle. They control the tempo of the game and how they want to do it. It's not necessarily a hurry up offense, but it's one where they control the tempo. If they need to go hurry up, they can. Spread offense that has become much more balanced as the season has worn on as they've discovered. McCleskey's talent. Four wide receivers, three to the right of the Dooley on second and seven. Here comes the rush. The big guy Kennedy gets him. That's 310 pounds on top of Gino. Again, that's his tenth sack of the year, and folks, that is incredible to do that from a defensive tackle position because you're getting double teamed a lot. He's got amazing quickness and great burst off the ball. You'll see it right there. Bam. Hits him with a shake and bake, splits a double team with a swim move. Now, 5'9", I'm not understanding how he's swimming, people. That's with an <laughs> arm over the head. That's hard. There's a little shake and bake, then a swim move, splits a double team, and does a good job of securing Gadouli up. That's a great athletic play for a man that big. And he swam over Josh Snyderov, who is 6'2". Yeah. So that's that, that's a heck of a swim move. That's yeah, an Olympic-sized swim he, move. He's got to jump to throw the swim move on the 6'2 guy. And it worked. 3rd and 16 after the 44th sack of the year. And that's the second interception of this game for the mean green. Mark Keith Norton coming up with the pick. Yeah, to me now, it looks like Ladera's van get, came up with some alligator arms. You know, that's, that's short arms. He didn't go reach for that football. So Gino Gadouli has a touchdown pass, but he now has two picks. That's Meet alligator me. arms. After the alligator arms. Gino Gadouli has just thrown his second interception of this game. He had 12 touchdowns and 11 picks and a two and five start for the season. Last six games, just four picks against 10 scores. He has one score and two picks today. And the main green, get it back. Smith rolling out. He's got Branch underneath, but instead goes for Marshall, who makes the juggling catch, and they say it's good. Marshall steps out around the 50-yard line. That's a good call to get that defense loosened up. First down throw. Let me see that. Marshall, a senior, fifth all-time in touchdown catches at North Texas. That is a first down. For the Mean Green, 21-yard gain. That is a big gain for this North Texas offense, which 
is not known for getting a lot of yards. So I'm talking about that you have to throw the ball on first down. They're going to put nine up in the line of scrimmage, throw the football. It worked that time up around midfield. Barber, big, big hole up the middle. Two plays, two straight first downs for North Texas. I'm going to take you back to this interception here. I'm gonna, and if you're a receiver, don't do this. Don't do this at home. He's coming, he's running square, but he doesn't go and lay out for the ball because he sees he's about ready to get hit. Now, if you're not going to go over the middle, and take a shot at the football as a receiver, then join another sport, get on the ping pong team. <laughs> Don't come in and play football if you're not gonna go in the ball or try to become a defender. And Gino Gadouli, we saw his reaction to that play, probably agreed with that comment because Van made no play whatsoever on the football. Meanwhile, down on the field, as Nolan was the one who came up with the second pick, he had a flag down, and the officials are He's in there talking now. I don't, what's he talking about? He's maybe telling the boys to settle down. It was unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams, it looked like to me, as Jim Knight the, is going over and talking to both huddles, maybe trying to tell him to calm it down. We've already had offsetting personal fouls and now offsetting unsportsmanlike conducts. Cincinnati, obviously a much better team when you don't turn the ball over, but what a difference, Chris, from minus nine to plus 13. Biggest part of the football game, the plus two in turnovers for the football game, 83.4% of the time. They have two turnovers today, North Texas none. Smith on the rollout, that's where his dangerous branch can't hold on to it as that falls incomplete. Yeah, more football coming your way tomorrow night. Two of the best quarterbacks in the country lead their respective teams in the 2002 GMAC Bowl on ESPN2. Byron Leftwich and the thundering herd of Marshall take on Dave Ragone and the Louisville Cardinals. For more on upcoming games, we have a lot of them. Log on to ESPN.com, the keyword schedule. And those two fellas have combined for more than 6,700 yards and 49 TDs. Byron Leftwich got my vote in first place for the Heisman. I do believe I agree with our colleague Mike Godfrey, best player in the country. Smith will pump. He's going for Marshall. Deep has him, but overthrows him. Marshall beat two guys, including Blue Adams. Yeah, Blue Adams jumped on the pump a little bit. Andrew's got to put a little air under that football. You see Andrew with the pump there. Marshall takes off deep. He has him beat. Now you got to put a little air under when he's got that much room to work with. Let him go get it. Marshall was in the clear there as Smith in his last two games of the regular season played very well against New Mexico State and Middle Tennessee, throwing for 263 yards, but missed that opportunity. 0 for 2 on third down so far for North Texas, and that one is winged and caught by Kevin Howard. Well, that's a strike, and I'm going to tell you what Cincinnati comes with, they call a field blitz. They're going to come with two guys from the strong side of the open end of the field or the wide side of the field. North Texas does a great job. They hit it. Right here's the blitz. Bam, bam. Two guys coming. Linebacker and outside linebacker coming. The seven route is open. The seven route's a corner. And this time he put it on a line. Threw that fastball in there. Made a great catch by Howard. Now Howard's got to keep his feet. Because he didn't have to leave his feet for that catch. He keeps his feet. He's in for touchdown. So you don't have to leave your feet. Keep your feet. Catch the ball and run. Just because you catch it, don't let the ball beat you up. Get in there, catch it, go. Just like that, that's only his eighth catch of the season. Howard, a junior from Dallas. 21-yard play. And whistles and flags fly before the snap. Howard is a guy who has had a tendency to drop some footballs during the season, but that was a good catch. game, offense, five yards. Smith that time unable to get the snap off in time, and then it pushes North Texas back five yards. You got to get the play in there. Come on, boys. Get a big play. Huddle up, get going. Business as usual. Smith replacing Scott Hall, who was the incumbent. Hall, a junior, will come back next year with two years of eligibility remaining as he tore a pectoral muscle and was unable to play. He got hurt in the first game against Texas. So it's Smith's team now, first and 15. Gives it to Galbraith. And he is enveloped by three Bearcats, including Jason Hunt. I was talking to Scotty Hall before the game. And, uh, he came up and looked me up and said, hey, hey, Mr. Spielman. I looked around. I thought he was talking to my dad, but it was me. <laughs> he says, I heard you had a torn pectoral muscle. And I said, yeah, I did. And don't worry, it'll come back. It takes time, though. It's a painful injury, and it's not torn where it's attached, but it's torn right in the muscle. He'll come back and be able to throw by the spring and have the same zip on the ball. Take a shot here. Now. There's a nice block inside. And the golfer does a good job of patience. And bam, 
A good fill by the linebacker. It's J.R. Randall we saw with a little forearm, too. Patrick Cobbs now in the backfield. There's Jamel Branch. They love that play as he comes around on reverses. Branch is a wide receiver who actually has more carries than receptions this season. You know, what that turns into is that, that's a, like a, the old USC student body right. What they're doing is they're trying to get a hat on a hat and outflank you, see. Cobbs does a good job of getting a hand on and gets a push on field. Fields does a good job playing off the block, but that's a nice play. That's kind of like a running play for him for North Texas. Getting Branch involved, he has speed, he can get out and be a game breaker for them. It's his 35th carry of the season. He came into this game with only 24 catches, the second leading receiver on this team. Very talented guy, was a Sunbelt Freshman of the Year last year. Hobbs remains in the backfield and yet another whistle. Te North Texas will take a timeout. Yeah, they're having trouble getting a play in and getting up to the line of scrimmage. That's why he burned the timeout. They didn't want another delay of game. You got to, if, if you're going to do, now North Texas is not used to substituting a lot of people. They came in with four wides. If you're going to run that formation, have your people, get them in the game, get up to the line of scrimmage and play ball. A very vital part of the field, so they're going to take it over and uh, talk it over, make sure that they're on the same page. Let's take time now to welcome the men and women of Com Fair Med, supporting all military air operations throughout the Mediterranean. Watching today on AFN, the American Forces Network. We hope you're enjoying the kickoff of ESPN's Bowl Week. and. Happy holidays, obviously, from all of us here at ESPN2. Tough time of the year to be away from families, and we're glad you could watch some football. First of many bowl games. Let's go down to Rob Stone on the field. Rob. Well, Pam, after Cincinnati's second game of the season, a loss to West Virginia, which they basically got run over, head coach Rick Minner took over the defense. His goal was really to kind of simplify things and kind of make a base package. So what he did is he gave every defensive player one of these. It's a wristband with defensive plays called on it. Now, the secondary, the linebackers, and the linemen all have a different set of plays. Don't worry, North Texas. Don't be cheating. These plays aren't aren't for today. But basically, Minner will see what kind of offensive scheme the opposition has and then he'll bark out a number guys will look at the wristband see what defensive package they're in and go from there thank you rob is mentor's old defensive coordinator at notre dame before he got the cincinnati job third and seven let's see what the timeout caused well it was an incomplete pass eventually to kevin howard as smith throws incomplete you had him open there. That's a ball you got to catch again. That was a well-thrown ball. That's one he's got to bring in. He had room to turn up and get the first down. Since now he's playing a soft zone, delivered the football on time. Good call. Got to bring it in. Cincinnati's total defense, 24th in Division One, but they had a horrible game, as Rob alluded to, against West Virginia early on in the season, losing that game 35-32. And the doer comes in. 30-yard field goal attempt, and that is good. Nick was only 9 of 14 during the regular season, and he knocks home that 30-yarder, and North Texas gets on the board. And they needed a score there to get back in and get their offense going. Again, that was a big series for quarterback Andrew Smith. Made a couple big plays to keep the drive alive and keep North Texas moving and on the board. They have gotten on the board, trailing 7-3. ESPN's primetime NFL doubleheader coming your way this weekend, beginning Saturday at 8.30 Eastern with the Eagles and Cowboys. Start your day off at 8 Eastern with NFL primetime. Then Sunday, it's the Jets and Patriots. At 8.30 Eastern, you can catch it on ESPN Deportes. NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite. Three seeds it at 7.30 Eastern. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime football. The Eagles have hard to clinch the NFC East. The Saints had an opportunity to clinch a playoff spot here Sunday, but lost in heartbreaking fashion to the Vikings. Yeah, Mike Tice choosing to go for two. I like the call. They have nothing to lose. Jets and Patriots, that'll be a playoff atmosphere type game. The guys are fighting for their lives, man. It's a different world when you get in that type of game. As we head now into late December, these, a lot of North Texas fans, we've seen them around town for the last couple of days. Yeah, we're in our hotel. Yeah, we've, <laughs> we've <Man>. noticed. <laughs> Denton, Texas is the location of North Texas, by the way, about 35 miles north of Dallas. Some of the folks making about an eight-hour drive from Denton to get here to New Orleans, and they're enjoying themselves. We've seen it firsthand. Had the bar now in to kick off for North Texas. Ty Keith and Carl Jones are deep, and Keith gets it around his tent. And he is 
knocked down around the 22-yard line. Taylor Casey making the stop. North Texas has had some guys go through there. You know some yeah, of them, Chris. Yeah, I see uh, yeah, Stone Cold there, Joe Don Baker. You got Buford Pusser, and down at the bottom there, Peter Weller. That's Robocop. How about Dave Barnett, our very own yeah, Dave Barnett? Right. How about yeah. that? Dave uh, actually has his photograph in the North Texas media guide. Gene Joe Green, Don Henley, excellent. A lot of guys going through Denton. That'd be a nice little matchup, uh, Buford Pusser versus uh, Robocop, man. That'd be a tough battle. And what? Just man to man? Just man to man, mano a mano. Let's roll. Who, who do you think would win that battle? I think Robocop would get him with the, the superior weaponry. <laughs> Maybe we can set that up. First and ten as McCleskey drags a guy with him. Chris Hurd is the guy who makes the ankle tackle. Now you see now, now what Cincinnati's doing, they came out throwing the football wide to set up the run. They set up the run, they get six or seven yards of pop. You have North Texas on their heels guessing what you're going to do. Hurd is a first-year starter for North Texas, had a career-high 84 tackles this year. Rick Minter in charge here at Cincinnati. Now in his ninth season, the second winningest coach in the history of that school behind Sid Gilman and four bowls is a school record. Also the first time they've ever gone to a bowl three years in a row. McCluskey breaking free for the first down for the Bearcats. Cincinnati's winning the battle of the line of scrimmage now. I see Brandon Kenny. He looks like he's sucking air a little bit down there. I think Josh Schneiderhoff gets a good block getting outside. They're getting people out on the flank and they're getting a hat on a hat and nobody's coming up to meet the blockers until they're three or four yards past the line of scrimmage. No coincidence that Cincinnati, after that bad start, started to play better. They alluded to it back in the studio with Trev, Mark, and Reese. And, you know, they start using McCleskey more, and they became a winning football team. A little play action now, and that one is incomplete, looking for Dennis Hart, his tight end. See, let me tell you the difference now when it's play action. First of all, as a linebacker or a defensive lineman, you can hear actually hear when it's a run because the offense line when they come out they're, rah, 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 they're growling and grunting when because they want to get out and get you pushed down the line of scrimmage when it's a pass you hear kind of like it's real soft so the pads aren't cracking that's how you read also you can read the angle of the shoulders of the offense line on that play action boot pass their shoulders are turned to the sidelines play boot get your coverage it's 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 something that's taught you can learn it and understand it play it not just your eyes but your ears help you out McCluskey Breaks a tackle from Hurd and struggles down to the 44-yard line. That's a six-yard gain. The last play of this first quarter, Cincinnati with a touchdown pass from Gadouli to Keith. They're leading at 7-3 after one in New Orleans. We are in New Orleans, as if we needed to tell you. Great food, great music, a lot of things to do in this town. And Cincinnati and North Texas are playing football here. North Texas making its second straight trip to the New Orleans Bowl, getting here as the Sun Belt Conference champ. George Murray is now in at quarterback for Cincinnati. He's their slash guy, and he pitches it to McCluskey. And McCluskey picks up about five. So we take a look at our ESPN2 game tracks. You know Gadouli threw an interception on his first pass, threw one later, but also as a touchdown pass. Penalties mounting up a bit against North Texas. McGee and Nolton coming up with the picks. Yeah, but, you know, those interceptions don't bother a guy like Jimmy. He's confident in his ability. He's confident in the offense. It's not going to affect him one way or another. It almost looked like that last play almost looked like a little bit of a forward lateral. That was close. It was very close. McCleskey actually picked up a first down on that play. Murray is a quarterback. Also, we'll see him at some wide receiver as Gadouli now comes back in to play quarterback. Well, high formation. You won't see this very often now that you see. McCleskey gets it and doesn't get much. Maybe a yard or so as Craig Jones makes the stop. Cincinnati offense, Rusty Burns is the offensive coordinator, and I tell you, to say that Rick Minter has gone through some assistance in the past few seasons would be perhaps an understatement. Yeah, watch Brandon Kennedy right here, work down the line of scrimmage, controlling the line of scrimmage, playing off two blockers, throwing his body in. That's a big-time play, using his body, giving it up for the boys to come in the green hats to put some helmets on the people. Good job, Brandon Kennedy. That's how you play defensive tackle, young man. Excellent. 
unanimous first team all conference for the second straight year and he's only a junior the big guy will be back next year second and seven the dually gets it tipped and heard let's see now yeah, let's they see they're saying it is an interception chris heard what a play yeah, and, and a good job of getting a deflection right there. Chris McIver getting his hands up on, on, on a quick throw. That's what you got to see. You got to be able to read it and get your hands up. Gino Gadulli on a almost three-step drop. McIver gets his hand up, and Hurd does a great job. Now, see, that's, that's, that ball hit the ground. That ball hit the ground. And, but Hurd does a good job of securing it. But we'll see it right here in the slow motion. I think the ball hits the ground. Right there, that ball hit the ground first. But a good job by Hurd of getting his hands underneath. Right here, let's see. Right there, that ball hit the ground first. Hurd gets his hands underneath and does a good job. Tough call for the officials, but that should not be an interception. Let it be noted right now. Okay, in the NFL, that would have been overturned. Hurd's second fifth of the season. Here comes the main green. Smith, Aaron it out. He's got Marshall deep, and he can't hold on to it. It could not have been a better throw in football. Well, you're right. And he's a guy, we talked to Ramon Flanagan. He's a guy that was Scott Hall's go-to guy last year. Right now, he's had a case of the drops. This is a great call because you're coming off a turnover. Let it fly. Andrew Smith puts it on the spot. All you got to do is catch the ball. Catch the ball and run. See ball, get ball. <laughs> Don't see ball, drop ball. See ball, get ball. You got six points. That's all right, Andrew. You'll get your chance, buddy. You'll get your chance. Hang in there. Keep winging it. Wow, that would have been a 66-yard touchdown. Instead, it's second and 10. Terrifically thrown football by the freshman. And now up the middle, that's Michael Hickman, the fullback, picking up a chunk of yardage. About seven. After you make a big play on defense, you want to score. You want your team to take advantage of your interception. There it is. He says, six points. Go! Oh, man. Take it easy on that water bottle. <laughs> And, and sitting next to him was McIver, who was his partner in crime in that uh, in that interception. Great shot by our guys to get the reaction. And as a defensive player, you made some plays, and it's just got to break your heart when you see points just disappear. Well, you just got to keep playing, worry about your job, and you know you don't worry about offense. There's nobody that feels worse than Marshall right there. But you know what? If he's a competitor, he wants the ball again. Give me another shot. I can do it. I can make the catch. Andrew Smith calls another timeout. Chris says he will talk things over. North Texas has just one left. After the timeout, third and three from North Texas' own 41. They're only one for four on third down so far in this New Orleans Bowl. Branch in motion. They fake it to him. And they're going deep the other side to Howard, and he catches it for the first down. That's a great throw, Andrew. That's a very difficult to throw, and he throws it to Howard on a seven cut again. Let's take a look at some key plays earlier. How about the, the interception that wasn't the interception and hit the ground, heard no credited for the INT, and then that's just a plain drop of a touchdown pass by George Marshall. And Andrew Smith's showing his frustration, but that time coming back well with that pass to Howard. 25-yard gain, and that's Howard's second catch of this game. That gives the Mean Green a first down at the 34. Hobbs doesn't get much. We're in New Orleans for the second annual New Orleans Bowl. Cincinnati coming in as co-conference USA champions against the Sun Belt champs. These two teams meeting for the first time in 29 years. They actually have met 17 times previously. They played 16 straight years. Last time in 1973, 12 of those 16 years was when both, both teams were in the Missouri Valley Conference. Three turnovers, three interceptions thrown by Gino Gadulli. And a timeout here taken by the Bearcats. Willis Edwards going to go over and talk things over with Rick Minner. We'll be back to New Orleans. 
Cincinnati leading this New Orleans Bowl seven to three despite three turnovers three interceptions thrown by Gino Gadouli and now North Texas has to take advantage of it. Well they do and in order to stay in this football game because they had a blown opportunity Marshall dropped a touchdown pass but what's keeping them in the game is their turnovers they're doing a good job defensively they won their conference with defense or ninth in the country in defense that's what kept us in the, kept them in this football game so far. It's kept them in the season there's a pitch a late pitch flags flying as Cobbs gets the pitch and picks up a couple. Ivan Fields making the stop on Cobbs, who backs up Galbraith. Well, they went with a hard count. They got the pass rushing demon, Antoine Peak, trying to jump that count a little bit. Got him offsides. Good call again. I like the switch up of counts, especially when you have Outside. an aggressive defensive end. Defense five yards from the previous spot, repeat the down. And Peak is about as aggressive as they come, Chris. First team All-Conference USA for the second straight season. He wanted to get 20 sacks this season. That was his goal. He only finished with six. He had 12 and a half last year, which was fourth best in the country. Very talented young man, a senior from Cincinnati. Yeah, he's played better this year, reason why he's played within the scheme. He didn't get the 20 safe. He got, he got 12 last year. A lot of it was on his own, own program. This year he's played within the program. He had, had a much better overall year. And up the middle. That is a good game for Michael Hickman, the fullback, a first down as he burst through for 12 yards. They, they got a referee hurt too now. The referee took a shot, but he's up. It's a good job of hitting a quick opening. And Antoine Peak again going upfield a little bit too much. Overruns the play. You hit it inside that quick. You get an opening that quick. It's going to be a big play. You see the referee. He says, man, I'm getting hit from all angles. But you know what? He's a football referee. He's up and at him. He doesn't need to take a tough pill. He already no, has. He's got one. He's got one in his pocket. All those refs carry a tough pill in their pocket. Hickman only had 24 carries on the season and 92 yards. He has a couple of carries today already for 19 yards. Pitch it out to Galbraith. Good job by Ivan Fields. He sniffed that out and put him down. You can tell that. Andrew Smith is not really comfortable running the option. We've got another flag on the play, usually for the umpire. I wonder if that's a flag for getting hit. <laughs> we've got another holding call in the mean green. But you can tell Andrew had a chance to turn that ball upfield inside and run it. He had some room to run. He decided to pitch. Not very comfortable running the option. They don't make a living off that play. by the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. Jim Knight making the call, and let's take a look at that play again. See, now if they call that on Marshall, which I don't think they did, but if they did call it, that's, that's a bad call. Your lot holding is tolerated by referees if your hands inside. You see big offense linemen, they work on always getting hand position. Hand position, you grab the the breastplate of the shoulder pads. If you get a hold of that, you're in trouble. That's a good block by Marshall. I thought, I thought the whole hold was backside a little bit. Andrew Smith calls the final timeout for North Texas. They burned all three of them. So the redshirt freshman from Bay City, Texas, had 12 guys out on the field. Knew he had to talk about it. No clarify. We'll be back. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. And by Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. We're back inside the Superdome where a lot of mean green fans have made the trip from Denton and they like what they've seen so far. Third time out burned already. First and 20 for the mean green from 27. Smith pitching it to Cobbs. Oh, he's breaking free into the end zone. Touchdown. The Mean Green takes the lead. <laughs> 27 yards. Cobbs was not touched by a Bearcat. That's his eighth touchdown of the season. What happens is North Texas does a good job of bringing Munchau in motion. They have a hat on a hat. Cincinnati didn't adjust. Everybody's running outside. Cobbs does a great job. Vision cutting back. 
Then he put a rocket booster behind him, pushed through the hole, six points, North Texas. Bob's had two 100-yard games this season, gets that touchdown, and the extra point is good. So the main green takes its first lead of the game, 10-7. You see it right here. There's Munchau coming in motion to get a trip formation. They outflank Cincinnati's defense. Cincinnati panics. Everybody starts to run outside. Cobbs hits it inside. The offensive line does a great job of cutting off the backside pursuit. He hits it up inside, smells the end zone, and goes and gets the end zone. Cobbs, a little bit more speed than Kevin Galbraith, and you're right, he showed it that time with a little rocket booster at the end. Tomorrow night, two of the top quarterbacks in the nation lead their respective teams in the 2002 GMAC Bowl on ESPN2. Byron Leftwich and Marshall against Dave Ragone and Louisville. For more on upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com, keyword schedule. And Byron Leftwich, your pick for the Heisman Trophy, sure had the numbers for it, Chris. Well, I mean, you look at that, 4,000 yards, and this is the impressive one right there, 69%. And Carson Palmer's well-deserving, and all those guys are well-deserving, but I felt I struggled with my pick or my vote. I woke up morning and said, Chris, quit screwing around. Who's the best player in the country? And to me, it was Byron Leftwich. And he certainly, uh, I was shocked that he was not at least one of the five finalists. I thought that that was uh, rather strange. Leftwich had a terrific season. And again, he went to Marshall, one of those smaller non-BCS conference schools. And those guys are definitely penalized for that. And it's really not fair. He's a great football player. I think Coach Pruitt put it, uh, put it best himself that says Byron's going to win his Heisman on the draft day. Yeah, I think he'll be doing okay on April. North Texas, after that 27-yard run by Patrick Cobbs, kicks it off. Bearcats, Ty Keith, stops short of the 20. All 10 North Texas points have come courtesy of Gino Gadouli interceptions. Boy, did Cobb show a burst of speed on that play. Yeah, I was, again, talking to Scott Hall, the quarterback that, for North Texas who started the season before he injured his pectoral muscle, was telling me about Cobbs. He said, Chris, watch him, man. That's a guy that can do some damage. He's the future of that North Texas running game, and he showed it right there. A great burst through that hole, man. You love to see that burst, that extra gear. You had that extra gear, right? Well, when a guy had a ball, I'd find it. <laughs> there you go. Cobbs is only a sophomore, as Galbraith is a senior, so two more years of Cobbs running for North Texas. That's exciting stuff. And it's exciting to watch this mean green defense showing why they're one of the best in the country this year. Kennedy and company is all over McCleskey. Yeah, talking to Stacy Searles, the offensive line coach for UC. Say, Stacy, how do you block this guy? He says, I don't know. I never <laughs> seen a guy like him again. Fighting off the double team. Does a good job of the spin move, not giving up on the play, getting find the ball with great instincts and making a play. Former point guard for his high school basketball team. Can you imagine? Good dunk, he said, when he weighed about 285. Now he's up around 310. Says his dunking days, at least for now, are behind him. Yeah, he needs to lose 10. He'd be an even better player. You know, I don't think you need to be 310. Not at 5'9". A lot of talent for that kid. Gino Gadouli takes Cincinnati's second timeout. Let's go down to Rob Stone, who's a little smaller than Brandon Kennedy. Rob? <laughs> yeah, a little smaller. Actually, <laughs> I'm probably about as tall as he is, but uh, weight-wise, he's got about three Rob Stones in him. Uh, but Kennedy's older brother, Kanoe, is actually the Denver Broncos' starting strong safety. And opponents know that. In, in North Texas' opener at the University of Texas, several Longhorns were chirping at Kennedy basically saying to the fact, hey, where's your big brother now? Can't protect you. Little bro can't match up. Kennedy's comeback, minus, of course, a, a few choice words, and I love this. Boys, I'm going to make you better today so you know what it's like to play in the NFL. I love that from Brandon Kennedy, but Chris, is this kid big enough to make it in the big leagues? Well, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at the prototypical type defensive tackle, probably not. Is he good enough, and is he big enough? And if I was a pro personnel guy or a coach, would I draft him? You're darn right I'd draft him. He reminds me of a lot of a guy from Beaumont, Texas, an SMU named Jerry Ball, who was a great athlete, had the quicks, and, and he, he looks like Jerry. In fact, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, Jerry had the pass rushing skills that Brandon Kennedy has. This guy's a special player, and he will get a shot in the NFL, and he can be a dominating player because he demands attention from two offensive linemen on every play, and you cannot move him. 
He's like a mini, he's like a Jerry Ball Ted Washington, two of the great nose guards that I play with. He's a, he's a combination of both those guys. And he seems like he might be quicker. He's, so, well, Jerry's pretty quick, but Brandon's right up there now. He has five tackles and a sack today already. Second and nine after the timeout. Padouli zips it, completes it to Keith. Oh, what a tackle! Corey Wyatt gets him down, loses a yard. It's a good job of adjusting to that play by the North Texas defense. You've been burned on it quite a bit now. You've been burned on it three times so far, but you start running, you start reading it, you get people running the ball. Corey White does a good job of slashing in there, avoiding the blocker, and getting a hand on the foot to bring him down. Corey's a junior from Oklahoma City. Started four games this year coming in to today's New Orleans ball. And the Thunder Sticks are clapping from the North Texas fans on third and ten. The duel is short to Olinger and incomplete. They rule that it hit the turf first, and the Bearcats have to punt. That one's on Gino now. Gino's got to deliver that football. Where Olinger doesn't have to go down to get it. He's wide open. Although it hits his hands, he's got to bring that in. But Gino's got to put that one on top. We'll see it right here. That's a tough catch. We almost had it. That's a, you know, that's a ball where he had a lot of room. Pearl was behind him. He's got to put that ball up where he can get it, and outside. First look at Chet Irvin, who barely gets that punt away, and a fair catch. No. Chris's least no. favorite play by yeah. Jamal Branch. You no know, fair catch with the halo roll. He fair caught it. North Texas gets the ball back with the lead at 10-7. Welcome back to the New Orleans Bowl, where the Mean Green have picked off Gino Gadouli three times. He's been sacked there by Brandon Kennedy, taking on this Mean Green defense that led the Sun Belt in every defensive category, now up to 44 sacks on the season. And they've converted those three interceptions into 10 points. Andrew Smith, play action. He's going deep again, trying to hook up with Howard, and that one is just overthrown. Well, these receivers for North Texas, Chris, are getting some separation yeah, deep. And, and what's happening is they're coming in what they call 22 personnel. That's two tight ends, two backs, and one wide receiver. On paper, it looks like a running formation, but what they're doing is they're doing a good job of their play action, getting the receiver isoed, hitting him in the post. Now, if you're Cincinnati, you take a look at the depth of the backs. Galbraith was cheated up for pass protection. That tells you right away it's play action. He wasn't deep enough to run the football. North Texas showing some balance, known as a running team, Chris. They have 74 yards on the ground today, 78 through the air. Very balanced, taking some shots against this Cincy pass defense. They'll do it again. Smith for Branch, and he threw it just behind him. Branch had to contort his body and could not bring it in. Well, that was set up by the two option plays that North Texas ran earlier. It's a tough throw to make across the field from, from number to number almost. And he threw that behind Jamal Branch. Jamel had a chance to get it, but again, ball thrown behind. It's all right, throw the ball, Darrell. I know, I know that hurts you a little bit, but throw it. And they're taking some chances and doing very well. Some misconnections, a huge drop by George Marshall that would have been a 66-yard touchdown early on in the second quarter. And there's that play selection, very balanced in the yards again, just four more through the air than on the ground. Smith, that one's bounced not even close. To hitting branch. Well, that's one that now that's on Andrew. You got to throw that ball and deliver it. He was open on the out cut. And again, with a young freshman quarterback, he threw a few strikes. Now he's missed his last two. You got to get him over the sidelines. And the seniors on this football team do a good job of hope, helping Daryl Dickey and Ramon Flanagan, the offensive coordinator, to settle him down when he gets out of sync a little bit. So Brad Cadubar is in for his third punt for North Texas. Sophomore. Ty Keith waits back on his 20. Good putt. Keith retreating all the way back to the five. He had to go back 15 yards and then is just buried. As a flag comes down, Walter Priestley, sophomore from Elite Texas with a nice stop. And Cadillac getting some high fives. Also the starting corner. You like to see your starters on defense play that way. Play on special teams, major contributors. A punt of 53 yards. 53 yard punt by Cadlebar. It's coming back a little bit. Let's go now to Reese Davis. Reese. 
Well, Pam, I don't know exactly what Byron Leftwich can do for an encore tomorrow night in the GMAC Bowl. Remember what he did against East Carolina last year, leading Marshall back from down 38 to 8. They won it 64 to 61 at halftime. We'll relive the greatest comebacks from last year's bowl season and wonder whether we have another shootout like that coming tomorrow night. Boy, thanks, Reese. It'll be tough to top that one. You're right, but it was more entertaining games to watch as a fan, anyway. Yeah, Boy. Should, they should have went to the two-three zone <laughs> instead of man-to-man. -man. That's, that's a basketball game. Uh, something. Ooh. Terrific game last year. There was a shot of Steve Logan at the end of that, where of course he resigned earlier this month as the head coach at East Carolina. Reese, Trev, and Mark join us at the half. And right now, Cincinnati is backed up after the penalty. And they are snapping it from the three. North Texas is man to man. This is the formation when Cincinnati is in this position. They'll play man to man. McCluskey gets some room. Picks up about nine. Greg Jones making the stop. And it has been three turnovers, three Gino Gadouli interceptions. The first one coming on his first pass of the game. And then two subsequent interceptions. That one. Looks like Hurd trapped it, but North Texas would score on those last two possessions, scoring 10 points off those last two picks. You know, I got to give some offensive linemen some love here. Takovitz that time did a great job on blocking, carrying his man downfield, getting a great block on the linebacker Taylor Casey for North Texas. Takovitz, a sophomore from Powell, Ohio. Kleski going the other way, runs into one of his blockers, and then he is hit by Taylor Casey. Well, and, and Taylor's a little upset, and, and that's that's a kind of that's a uh, hit. You know, when you hear the guy, you hit the guy, and he goes, uh, uh, he loses his breath. That's a uh, uh, hit, and that was a great hit. Nice hit, Taylor. Way to come back. You'll see now Cincinnati has people now. The offense linemen are out, but Taylor Casey comes in out of nowhere. Bam! Does a great job of delivering a blow. I wrap him up, and that'd be a double to home hit. <laughs> Casey, the junior from Odessa, Texas, leading this team in tackles and getting a uh -huh tackle on that one. Yep. You hear that? You hear that running back? Uh -huh. you, you know you got a good shot on. That's good. Husky keeps his feet after the initial try to get him down. And he is eventually stopped by Daryl Daniels. And Marco McCluskey with that run, with the run subsequent to that, has become the leading rusher in any season in the history of Cincinnati football now at 1,340, surpassing Reggie Taylor of 1986. Great year for him. And starting off slowly, but they started giving him the ball about four games deep into the season, and it's paid off. They go right back to him, and Chris Hurd makes sure he doesn't get very far. Well, what's happening is Taylor Casey is forcing that ball to cut inside, and he's getting penetration, forcing the ball to cut before McCleskey wants to cut it, and the mean green pursuit's coming up. Chris Hurd that time from his linebacker position. Linebacker's working like fingers in a glove. Chris Hurd coming up, making a nice play. Now, if you're Cincinnati, Pam, you're, get, you're getting away from your offense a little bit. You've got to throw the ball, and I'm not talking just screens now. You throw the ball downfield. Maybe they're a little gun shy of doing that because of the three picks. Uh, you, you can't, if you're a spread offense with no huddle offense and, and mainly a three receiver offense, you're going to start throwing it downfield. Third and one. I don't think McCluskey got it. Good job bottling people up inside. Priestley, Walter coming in from his corner position among those, clogging things up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're no threat to throw. So Walter's coming up, playing a little corner blitz. And you'll see him come up. Bird does a good job. Everybody fills their gaps. Priestley coming up, making open field tackle. Taking a bigger man down, playing great gap responsibility defense. A nice call by Coach Deloach, the defensive coordinator for them. Mean Green. Very mean on that play as Urban comes in and punts again. They're getting close to him. And that time, no fair catch by Branch, but he retreats. Flag is down as Branch is taken down just short of midfield. Only a 32-yard punt. Got two flags. You got a holding. Holding against Cincinnati, and maybe a, something on the return. Now, special teams are sloppy, which is often the case when you have some time off between the end of the season and your bowl game. You Got to play discipline on special teams. Don't block in the back. Belly bump them. Oh, two. Both of them against Cincinnati.
Fourth Texas defense is a reason why they're third in the country in scoring defense, ninth in total D, 13th in pass defense. And boy, they're showing it today. Muskie taking that hit there by Taylor Casey. Well, when you have active linebackers. Hey, by the kicking team, the holding penalty is being accepted, and it is a previous spot enforcement foul. We will penalize and repeat the down. They can kick it again. You know, I was, it's the point I was making, when you have two inside tackles and one dominating inside tackle like Brandon Kennedy and active linebackers, you're going to be a good run defense. And I'm just impressed with the North Texas linebackers. Very instinctive. They know where they're supposed to be. Their gap responsibility is sound. And they hit it downhill. They don't float across the behind the line of scrimmage. They come and get you. And that's why they're, they're, they're great. They're a great defense. Nine points, number one in the conference rush defense, number one in pass defense. Really an outstanding team. Well coached. And a team you did not hear from much this year because they do play in the Sun Belt. And the good thing is their top four linebackers, Casey, Hurd, Wyatt, and Spencer, they are all juniors and will be back next year. 130 yards is all that Cincinnati has been able to muster. And remember, they scored on their second possession. They got 47 of those yards on one possession. Capped off by Ty Keith catching a six yard pass from Gino Gadouli. So the punt again by Irvin. Branch, another flag. It's become a flag fest here in New Orleans. Yeah, they're, they're, they're tackling everybody out there. First of all, Pearl tackled his man right there. See, he's talking to the ref now. Number 10, throw it there. Trying to plead his case, and that's that's right here. See, you can't tackle if you're blocking. That's a, that's not a very smart football play. If you're beat, you're beat. Turn and go to the next level on special teams. That means find another white shirt. Somebody will pick your guy up. You tackled a man, young man. Not no, don't don't do that. You tackle him. I watched it. I watched you the whole time. I can't help it. Yeah, I'm starting to coach up here, man. Talk to Jeremy. Pearl. Yeah. Walk all the way by the receiving team during the return. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, it's a mental error. Pearl, a junior from Parkville, Missouri, who sees most of his time on special teams. You can see NFL doubleheader stuff this weekend. Saturday at 8.30 Eastern, it's the Eagles and the boys. Watch NFL primetime at 8 Eastern time. Then Sunday at 8.30 Eastern, Super Bowl champion New England takes on the Jets. Also available on ESPN Deportes. But first, watch NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home primetime football. Pam, now, you know, that's a big penalty. Why? Look at the field position change. We're back at the 38 when they had the ball in UC territory. And, and a dumb play. A mental error. You don't need it on that kind of play. Right. They would have been up at the 49. Instead, they are back at the 38, their own 38. And that is bobbled. Good job by Smith to fall on it. He was trying to get it to Galbraith on the pitch. Yeah, I'm not sure Galbraith was expecting that. And you saw Branch come around as you as they often they run him around the yeah. end. Yeah, he was expecting it. It was kind of a pitch cutback. The pitch was a little high. That's one that Galbraith has to handle though. Now that's right in his hands. You got to catch that one. That was a pitch cutback. They had Branch come around, try to get the defensive flow. Galbraith would get the ball in the backfield, and they'd do a design cutback. Didn't get a chance to develop because he dropped the football. They lost five yards on that play. North Texas, by the way, plus one in turnover margin during the season. They have not turned the ball over at all today. They have three picks. Caught. I'll tell you what, Smith is going almost exclusively now to Kevin Howard, who picks up seven more yards. This is the New Orleans Bowl, second annual coming to you from the Louisiana Superdome. Pam Ward, Rob Stone, and Chris Spielman joining you as the University of Cincinnati band gets ready to strut its stuff. Heard them about 9.20 this morning outside my room. And yeah, they were ready to roll. They were, they were doing some band stuff earlier. It was either them or North Texas. I'm Somebody will. I hope they don't get their game face on too early by playing this morning. I hope they have some, some bugs left. Third and seven. Smith zipping it towards Howard, and that is incomplete as he was double covered around the 37 yard line. That's uh, Antoine Peak applying pressure, does a great job with the speed rush, beating Munchum on the corner, forcing a bad ball by Andrew Smith. Antoine Peak's a player now. 21 tackles for loss on the season for Peak, who will leave as one of the most decorated defensive players in the history of this Cincinnati program. 
And he also will leave with the college degree. One of eight guys playing today who graduated this December. And that's a terrific achievement for these guys. A great graduation rate for the Cincinnati football team. Testimony to Rick Minner, too. The importance of academics. Student athletes first. Brad Kadubar in for his fourth punt. Good air under that one. And it takes a North Texas bounce. Killed and at the five yard line by Russ Owens. 54 yard punt, Reese Davis. Pam, nice punt. And I'll tell you, the thing you're going to have to worry about now is whether Alabama will ever have to punt again, I guess. That's what the Crimson Tide's hoping. They're bringing a high powered offensive mind in, according to Washington media outlets. Washington State coach Mike Price has accepted the job as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. Reports in Washington say that Price met with his players on the afternoon and told them that he had accepted the Alabama job. We are waiting for confirmation from the Alabama side of this. Crimson Tide has been looking for a coach since Dennis Franchoni left for Texas A&M. We'll see you a little bit later on the Dodge Halftime Report. All righty, Reese, we look forward to that. Sort of wow. uh, surprising, huh, to see Price make that move? I think it's surprising, and, and especially with that going to the Rose Bowl, and, and, and uh, at least he talked to his players, though, before he left. That's, uh, that's always a plus. And that's one thing that uh, Dennis Francione was not you come on with yeah, And I, as a player, would that have ticked you off? Yeah, too? it would have ticked me off. I think if, if, you're take, if you take a coaching job and you're going to leave, tell your players, man to the to, to man, that, hey, guys, it's a better opportunity we're going to leave. That's Philip Graves, or actually Brown, who is, who is uh, hurt for Cincinnati. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, guys, we all know there's very little stability in the world of coaching, but Cincinnati taking it to ridiculous lengths the last two seasons. Coach Winters had 11 new assistants last two years, five alone this season, and basically said, it's no longer fair to put my players through new schemes every time a new coordinator, new coach comes in. So Mentor stepped in and said, here's what we're doing. Coordinators, you adapt to what I want to coach. Chris, do you like that adaptation by Mentor? Well, he's a defensive guy, and yeah, I do, uh, Rob, because again, it's not fair for the players. You don't get any continuity amongst your players. It's easier for one guy to learn it than 22 guys to learn it. Not much going on there for McCleskey as Cincinnati starts deep in its territory. Starting on its six, the last position they started on their own three. So North Texas certainly winning the battle of field position. Yeah, and North Texas is getting more and more confident and you're seeing guys sneaking up from the defensive backfield making tackles at the line of scrimmage. That's because Cincinnati is not throwing the ball down the field. You need to put the ball down the field a little bit to loosen them up. Instead, they put it on the ground again, and McCleskey, a flag comes down as McCleskey only picks up a, a yard or two. And you see, these referees are going to have to ice their arms for throwing so many flags after this game. It's going to be the 12th penalty of the game so far. I don't know what that sign is. They might have made one up. Oh, what is that? Earl Dickey doesn't want it. Maybe that's a little New Orleans sign. Somebody help me out. What is that sign? Illegal chop block oh. by the offensive team. The penalty is declined. Next down is third. I think you, I, I think Mr. you got to go down to your knees there, Mr. Knight, for that one. <laughs> you might be getting tired of He's throwing tired. all those flags, man. You can't bend anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's third and nine after that illegal chop block with the Inventive call by Jim Knight, the inventive signal, and it is refused, bringing up third and nine from the seven. The duel with plenty of time, but terrific coverage downfield. It's intercepted. Fourth pick, Jeremy Powell waltzes into the end zone. Got a flag down here. Hold on. But there is a penalty. Now, that, see, it's okay though because if you're, it's okay if you're a mean green fan because it's holding against UC. Now, Gino, that's on Gino. Josh Gardner was holding on to play. That interception's on Gino. And if you make a, a mental error when you're blocking or tackling somebody, if you're on a punt return team, holding how do you atone for it? The offense, the penalty is declined. Touchdown. You come and make a big play and take it in, and it's a mean green defense right now winning the battle of the high-powered offense. Now, what they're doing is they're dropping eight. They're only rushing three. They're only rushing three, but three's getting pressure. Gino throws it with a guy in his face, and I don't know where he's throwing the ball. I think he was trying to throw it away. He didn't see Pearl. Pearl steps in, stays patient, catches the football, finds the end zone. Four interceptions for Gadouli. 
Extra point makes it 17-7 in favor of the Mean Green as they get their points off turnovers. See right here now, what they're gonna do is they're gonna run a little out route to come back and try to throw the football to come back. I don't know where he's throwing. I think he was trying to throw it away. Pearl's sitting in his zone. He's patient. Catches the ball. Now, the, the problem here with, for Cincinnati is they're getting pressure with three, allowing them to drop eight, putting five underneath, taking all the underneath routes away. They have the deep right away. That's all right, Gino. You can come back. Good quarterback. Good offense. Relax. You'll come back. But the main green defense right now is winning the battle. All the points, all 17 coming off those four picks. And the four picks, by the way, equals Gino's career high. He's only had four interceptions in one, go in, in one game once previously in his career. And he's looking a little down there right. on the yeah, sideline. You can't get down. You're only down 10 points. Get that, uh, that dauber. I think that's the word. Get that dauber up. You get in there at halftime. You make your adjustments. Trust your coaches. And you have to throw the ball downfield, though. They're not throwing the ball downfield. Everything is up three-step drops. They're trying to run it too much, in my opinion. They need to spread the field, take advantage of the zone defense, and put pressure on them by putting the ball down the field. With that interception, Gino now has 20 interceptions on the season against 22 touchdowns. So it's getting very bad in that touchdown to interception ratio. One touchdown pass today. But four interceptions, one of which you just saw, was returned for a mean green touchdown. Line drive kick. And it will be a touchback. Now it's coming back now. They got an offsides for Texas. Another flag down so that line drive kick for a touchback negated. He'll have to do it again. Uh, the guy was six yards offsides. Jeremy. Sorry, Chris. Jeremy Pearl, that's his first career touchdown and as he got his first pick of the season. Good job. That was a good job. Being disciplined in his zone coverage. He had good spacing underneath. Five guys underneath, three over the top, three put in pressure. It's tough to throw if you can if, if three guys can beat five and pass pro. We saw these guys practice yesterday as we get Offside. another call. Kicking team, five yards will be administered on the re-kick. You noticed, Chris, that Daryl Dickey's guys were, were practicing a lot of different defensive looks in practice yeah. yesterday. A lot of defensive calls. They're, they're a big zone team. Not much for man to man. They play zone, they're gap sound, and they understand the concept of zone. The thing I like about it in their zone defense is their eyes are on the quarterback. They get great breaks on the football. And they read routes. If you're a zone team, you can be an effective team to turn into a man-to-man -man defense if you understand route progression by the underneath receiver and the overtop receiver. That's when you're a good football team. You don't always have to be playing man to play tight coverage. Well, after the offsides, North Texas kicks it off again, this time from the 30. Ty Keith retrieves it at his eight. Oh, man. a big man. 25. Duffy Reese, awesome. Oh, yeah, we want people that'll bring your feet, Reese says. <laughs> Coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, Chris Ricks <laughs> ineligible for the Nokia Sugar Bowl. He will not grace the floor in the game that you guys are watching right now. We'll look ahead to the GMAC Bowl, a great quarterback shootout coming tomorrow night on ESPN2 between Byron Lethwich and Dave Ragone. And we will also enlighten you on the Bowl Challenge Cup. ESPN's going to give a great big trophy to the conference that does the best in the postseason. Minimum of three games being played. And of course, the latest on the Alabama coaching situation. Mike Price, the new boss there. All right, Reese, thank you very much. Craig Jones among those with that big hit before we went over to Reese. And that pass is bobbled and incomplete as he's going for Olinger. And the Cincinnati offense, we talked about it at the top of the show, how potent it is. This is a really good offense, man. They, they average 400 yards a game. They score 30 points a game. And this mean green defense has just stuffed, stifled them. Yeah, you, you, your, your, big gun, your big guns rattle a little bit. Gino's rattle because those are passes normally that are thrown right on the numbers. He threw that one low and outside like, a, like an off-speed slider. He's got to put that on the numbers and give Olinger a chance to do some damage once he catches the football. Second and ten after the incompletion, going up top again. That one is complete, but a very short gain for Ladaris Van. That's Craig Jones, a guy that made a big hit on special teams, coming up, reading the split receiver skin screen. Now, what 
the Mean Green's doing is they have that play down. If you're Cincinnati, in your playbook, you dig deep. You fake the split receiver screen, you send the guy deep, you pump it, you throw the ball up top because Mean Green is jumping on that receiver screen right now. And to add injury to insult, Ladaris Van, who caught that short uh, pass, is hurt. Cincinnati training team looking at his right leg. Well, you watch that. Every, everybody that has that split screen in has a play where they'll fake the split screen, they'll send the guy deep, you throw it over top. You do a pump fake, you throw the ball down the field. But right now, Gino's not delivering the ball with authority because he's gunshot. You throw four picks, you get gunshot. He's a kid that can't get gunshot. He's a gunslinger. You got to go ahead and let her rip, man. You have nothing to lose. He is 8 for 15 for 75 yards, eight completions, but four interceptions, one of which was returned for a touchdown. First time in three years, by the way, that North Texas has taken an interception back for a score. Brad Castle took one back 23 yards against Texas Tech back in the 2000 season. It's good to see Ladaris up. Let's see you guys get hurt. See McGee right here coming up. Good job of sneaking through. And a little ankle twist right there. You see an ankle fall underneath. It's tough. I don't see a lot of green helmets running around that football. Van, a senior from Fort, Peace, uh, Fort Pierce, Florida. One of the three senior receivers who've had good years for Cincinnati until this game started. How good? Well, he led the whole Conference USA in catches. But now it's third and ten. Big play for Cincinnati. They're going to rush three and drop eight again. Four receivers in for the Bearcats. Here comes that rush, and they get the dually, but he gets it off in time but has to throw it away. Three-man rush doing the job. Darrell Daniels bringing pressure. And I'm going to tell you right now, Cincinnati has no chance if they can't block three guys. There's no chance. you got to be able to block three guys. And Darius Daniels just uses a speed rush comes in and gets the pressure. Now what I'd like to see him do, take it to the next level, bring that off arm and try to strip the football instead of wrapping him up high. Take that off arm, wrap him up high to get the ball, knock the ball out of that. Boy, he just blew by Kyle Takovitz like he was just air. Great job of getting to the quarterback and forcing the throw away. Got it. Yeah, that's Pearl again. In on Irvin's punt. Branch lets it go. Now, is he, 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 he ran past the punt. You got to understand where the kick point is. Now he was he came so free that he ran past the punt and we were able to kick the ball away. You'll see it right here. Watch him, he's by the ball. You got to be able to take that ball off the foot. He had his hands in good position, but be in control of your body, take the ball off the foot. Cincinnati gets away with one right here. Bobble that snap, gave him an extra chance. Now you got to go down right there. You got to you got to get your Academy Award winning shoes out. You got to go down. Now Pearl comes in now look. Take the ball off the foot. Understand where the kick point is. Understand where he's going to deliver the ball off his foot. Run to that spot. Don't run past it. Be in control. See, that's what he's telling him right now. Bring, be in control of your feet, young man. Boy, he had a big touchdown. Okay, he is the guy who ran the interception in for a touchdown. Smith goes down for the first time today as he is tackled in the backfield. Matt Tupola. Tupola with the. Tupola, excuse me. And, and, and you know, he's got big pants. And that's a nice job of him coming and beating a double team inside. Right here, take a look at him. No, he's singled up. Throws a nice swim. He's got the swim move. He, he watched the Brandon Kennedy training tape. He threw the swim move. He said, if the, a big stocky guy like Brandon can do it, I can do it. Way to go, Matt. 329. He's kind of stocky too. Yeah. But a lot taller than Kennedy at six foot two, and that is the first sack, a nine-yard, a nine-yard deficit, now second and nineteen. Galbraith is tackled for no game, so a third and long coming up for North Texas. Andre Frazier does a good job playing his defensive end position, holding his responsibility, slowing Galbraith down, letting the black helmets come and get a hit. It's a good job, Andre. Good discipline defense. Freshman. Sophomore, excuse me. Good player. Andrew Smith, the redshirt freshman quarterback, now faced with a third and 20 as we are inside 25 seconds here in the first half. They're just running, play conservative. Well, yeah, see, I'm surprised Cincinnati didn't take a timeout to try to block the punt. Got nothing to lose. Boy, Galbraith gets it up past the original line of scrimmage, but it'll be fourth and nine coming up. 
Franklin Calicott making the stop as the first half comes to a close. Cincinnati coming in as the favorite, but this mean green defense living up to its moniker, four interceptions yeah, leading to all 17 points. And plus, they're, they're beating them up physically. And, you know, Cincinnati's not used to that. They're getting punched in the mouth, and apparently they like it because they're not getting, they're not punching back. North Texas is coming and beating them up physically. Let's see how UC comes out the second half. I guarantee you, they'll come out with a little more attitude. They're going to need it down 17-7. Jeremy Pearl with a 20-yard interception return that gave North Texas this 17-7 lead. And North Texas, known as a conservative offense, like to keep the ball on the ground. Have had great success through the air. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Rob. Coach, what has North Texas done to kind of get your offense out of its normal rhythm? Well, we forced four takeaways. That's what they've done. And anytime you give the ball up, you have a chance to lose a football game. That's what they've done. We haven't stopped the run like we need to. We've given up big plays. We're, we're, we're happy that it's not 35 to 7 right now with all these big plays. So we got a lot of work to do. What do you plan on saying to your quarterback in the locker room? Well, we're just going to settle him down a little bit. Quit forcing the issue. Take what they give him, and we'll be okay. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, Rob, 71 rush yards for North Texas, but 86 through the air. The main green with the 10-point lead at the half as we go to Reese Davis. Reese. Well, Pam, apparently it is easy being green. North Texas in all green units for the first time in school history, and they're up on Cincinnati by 10. Glad to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report. You know, all time, Cincinnati is 1-4 and four in the Superdome in New Orleans, and we tried to figure out how they were with lids over them everywhere. Just like 2 Brett and 11. Just like Brett Favre can't win in the Dome. Yeah, maybe they're the Conference USA version of Brett Favre. They've got to show some Favre-esque ability to come back. Remember I said in the pregame that uh, they need to be balanced? Yes, you did. They are. McCleskey's got about 70 yards, but Spielman's right. F up front, North Texas, way too good. Getting pressure with three guys. Gadouli, four interceptions. You'll never win turning the ball over that many times. Well, we talked about North Texas' defense. I did in the beginning. And, and if you look at their defense, they are playing an outstanding game, but it's their offense. Andrew Smith, the freshman quarterback, averages only 16 pass attempts a game. He's got 14 in the first half. Gerald Dickey, the head coach, opening it up in the bowl games. I love it. Well, you know one thing about the North Texas defense, they stood in there very well against Texas early in the season. Like Likewise, for a while against Alabama, so this is not as if they haven't played, you know, top flight offenses before this, and they're doing very well so far. The Mean Green up by 10. North Texas with the big lead, other people hiring coaches, teams losing quarterbacks. It's all coming up in the Dodge Halftime Report. This Halftime Report brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Glad to have you with us. North Texas on top of Cincinnati 17-7, halftime of the New Orleans Bowl. Well, Alabama's been searching for a head coach since Dennis Franchoni left to go to Texas A&M, and apparently they have found their man. Washington State's Mike Price will be the new coach of the Crimson Tide, according to several media reports, both in the state of Washington and in Alabama. Price apparently is on his way to Tuscaloosa right now. He'll be introduced as the Tide head football coach tomorrow. As for Washington State, they also have a press conference scheduled for tomorrow in which they will announce who's in charge on an interim basis, and we assume they will make the decision as to whether Mike Price will be able to coach in the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma. So, guys, Alabama's been searching. They, uh, they missed out on Mike Riley. You know, it really depends on how you spin this higher. Price is 56 years old. First time in his career, he's had back-to-back -back winning seasons the last two years. But then again, Washington State's only been to the Rose Bowl four times in history, and he's taken them there twice. Good hire or bad hire, Mark? I think it's a good hire. I think Mel Moore's done an outstanding job down at Alabama. <clears throat> and here's why. It's not their first choice, not the sexy choice in a Mike Riley, but it's a solid choice. You're getting a head coach that can come in and build a program. He's done it at Washington State with some up-and-down seasons, some bad seasons, some great seasons, but he's taken his team to the Rose Bowl. So he's really built that program at Washington State. And I think this is key. He's a great recruiter, and that's what Alabama's going to need right now and the other part of this when he left Washington State he talked to the players that's very important at Alabama you're getting a coach that can relate <laughs> to players well, I agree with you I think it's absolutely a great hire I mean I think if you look at this if you're Alabama what you're getting with coach Price is we all know about their offense the spread offense those sorts of things but the one thing I really enjoyed about Washington Washington State this year was defensively they had about 50 sacks they get great pressure on the quarterback and offensively if you're Brody Croyle you got to be saying to yourself I'm excited I mean if I get three and four wide receivers open it up I'm pretty excited but quickly what about the age he's 56 years old is that a problem I don't think so I think I think that's key I think you want an older guy that's going to be 
because he's not going to go anyplace. This may be his last coaching job. He's going to stay at Alabama. That's what Alabama needs, continuity. I think what Reese is saying, though, yep. is Mike Price the future of Alabama football long term? And I think clearly the answer is no. He no, can't I be. He's 56. Yeah, but I mean, he can still but, coach. Look at Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden. You're talking guys in their 70s. But, but, he can coach get him another through probation. Years. Get him through probation and then move forward. And then we'll see how that goes. In Washington State, he's left that program in very good shape. Yes. Obviously, they're going to the Rose Bowl. That's a little bit better job maybe than people would have thought a few years ago before Mike Price got there. Speaking of Bobby Bowden, he's got problems of his own. Chris Ricks ineligible for the Nokia Sugar Bowl against mm. Georgia. Ricks apparently, well, not apparently, he admitted he did it. He slept through a final exam. He's in good academic standing, but because of this, he's ineligible for the game. Uh, now you're left with McPherson, Adrian McPherson being kicked off the team. You're left with Fabian Walker to start against Georgia. Um, the Seminoles really in a state of disarray, Trev. Well, they really are. I think if you look at Florida State this season, the reason why they've lost four games, in my opinion, is just simply a lack you know, of leadership. And I think it starts at the quarterback position. You remember early in the season, Chris Ricks started out, and then there were some teammates who said, I don't know if he's the right guy. Nobody stepped up and said, Chris Ricks is our guy. Then it was Adrian McPherson. Nobody really took that team by the horns, Mark, and said, this is our leader, this is our guy. I think that's the problem with Florida State. Well, that's one of the problems that's on the field to play, but I think the other problem goes to the head coach and Bobby Bowden. You know, you lost some top assistants to Mark, Rick, and Chuck Amalo. You haven't recruited well the last couple of years. You've got some athletes down here, but here's the problem. Florida State's lost four games last year, four games this year. That's eight games. The previous five years, they've only lost six games. It's time Bobby Bowden, if he's the head coach of this football team, to take the reins of this program, settle the problems off the field to play, and start playing football on the field to play. I think that's the problem with Florida State. The quarterback situation is a problem, but it starts with the head coach and trickles down. It's from always there. the head coach's responsibility. Whether and give it's him credit for nine. following through with a rule. He well, missed he, the final, he, and that's the rule. Well, that, there's no question that they handled it. I'm not sure that he had a choice in that situation, right. though, with an academic situation. We are at halftime in the New Orleans Bowl. Cincinnati is down 10. To North Texas, but you know, comebacks have been a theme mm. both seasons of previous yeah. years. Back on the Dodge Halftime Report, North Texas on top of Cincinnati. Halftime of the New Orleans Bowl, 17-7. to But you know what? The Bearcats are down, but they are certainly not out. We learned that last season, myriad comebacks during bowl season, the most notable of which, Marshall down 38-8 East Carolina before Byron Leftwich led a rally. Leftwich first and goal for the 10. Quick corner to the end zone. It is. Oh, he got it. Darius Lawrence went up for the touchdown. He got it. And it's a tie game. Leftwich steps up and throws. Off the backside, gonna have to hurry. Got a man open and he throws it to Quinn Sanders. I wouldn't have believed it at halftime. We are tied at 28. Daniel Weaver knocks it home from 42 yards after Ohio State had staged the biggest comeback in Outback Bowl history. Holiday Bowl is pretty good, too, last year with Texas and Washington. Trev, why is it that bowl season is conducive to the comeback? Well, I think one of the reasons why is you play in these games that are two and three weeks after the last regular season game. So sometimes you don't know what the other team's going to do. It may take you a half to figure out what in the world's Ohio State doing. They didn't run this all season. We didn't see film of this. Then you go in and make the adjustments, and your team can come back, and then you see these comebacks in the bowl games. And plus, you get some of these offensive coordinators who are like mad scientists. What you do is you put them in their office, and they figure out and diagram all these trick plays and reverses and reverse passes. And you see a lot of high score in these bowl games. That's why I love bowl games. I wish there were 50 of them because you see some of the teams that are down by two or three touchdowns in the second half, they're going to throw the Hail Marys, they're going to throw the 50-yard passes. It's just great excitement. You might get there. We're at 28. How about a little hey, conference it. pride, too? You know, you look at how the conferences, you always look for the bragging rights among the conferences after the bowl season is all said and done, and we are going to reward the best conference here at ESPN this year. The team, or the conference, I should say, with at least three bowl games with the best winning percentage will win the Bowl Challenge Cup. So I ask you, uh, here, here are the records last year, so you can have a little history to draw on. You see the Big East had a great year last year. Look towards Conference the bottom, USA. Reese. Well, Conference USA struggling again tonight so far. 
Who's going to win it? Well, I'm going to tell you who's going to lose it. I like being negative. You look are, at the, uh, well, look at the Big Ten. They're you second to last. Get mad. Well, you know, look, Iowa's playing USC. Who's going to win that? USC. Miami's playing Ohio State. Who's going to win that? Probably Miami. I think the Big Ten definitely is not getting any hardware from us. Well, it's going to be the Big East. I'm going to go with history. History will repeat itself. Big East is 4 1 last year. They'll probably 4 1 again this year. That's because you feel awfully good about that Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Yes, I know. That 1 0 start. I know you feel good about that. And that's just a start. I had a lot more in the Big Ten. Hey, you know what? The Sun Belt, they don't have enough teams in there to qualify, but they're off to a nice start. How about Patrick Cobb getting loose for the touchdown? The mean green and all green up by 10. This halftime report brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And North Texas getting their bowl season off to a good start with a 17-7 lead over Cincinnati at the half. And tomorrow night here on ESPN2, we have the GMAC Bowl. Marshall and Louisville, great shootout between Byron Leftwich and Dave Ragone. Dave Barnett and company will be on hand to call it from Mobile. Guys? Any quarterback good enough to have his own bobblehead doll, as is the case for Dave Ragone of Louisville and Byron Leftwich of Marshall, obviously has an arm, but in the case of these two, Bill, it is not all they bring to the bowl. No, it's not, and I have my own Byron Leftwich bobblehead, and I'm delighted to have it because Byron Leftwich is a leader of men. Just to watch his courage in the face of great pain, watch his linemen carry him down the field to take the next snap and throw the next pass without ever complaining, and then to watch him rush to his defense when he's hit late is a remarkable thing for a guy that played with some pretty good quarterbacks. But then he's not the only outstanding quarterback in this game. No, he is not. Dave Ragone, a 255-pound quarterback, played behind an injury-riddled offensive line. He was sacked 43 times this year. He was hit an awful lot more than that as well. But he got up every single time. He'll stand in there and he'll make the throw for the team. So when he's in that huddle, 10 guys look him in the face. They know he's the leader of that team, and he's the main reason they're bowling this year, Dave. Expect points in the GMAC Bowl. Just remember, last year, 61 points by East Carolina. Still not enough to beat Marshall. Let's send it back to the studio. And Dave, 38 of those points in the first half, only eight for Marshall in the first half. Down 30, and Mark May, you said Marshall would win the game then, largely because you believe in Byron Leftwich, and you still do. Absolutely. The way that he throws the football, 69% completion rate this season, over 4,000 yards two years in a row. But what he gives you is that mental toughness. And he has players around him that gravitate towards him. I love that in a quarterback. Players will play better than they usually do just for Byron Leftwich because he's in the huddle. Louisville should win the game. No, they won't. They're the better team. If oh. if they show up to play, that's the point. Last week, they get beat by Houston, 27-10. to 10. If Louisville shows up ready to play, Henry Miller at running back. Marshall gives up almost 200 yards on the ground. You give the ball to Henry Miller. You run right at that defense. Have Byron Leftwich standing next to Mark May in the studio calling the win. Louisville, if they show up to play, will beat Marshall. 43 sacks on their quarterback, Dave Ragon, this season. I was Forget about to bring the ball. Bring that you that don't too. sack the quarterback when you're giving uh, the ball yeah, to Henry. We'll see. Nine, we'll see. If they do that, we will get I all of this started. next year for this call. Okay, we'll wait and see. We'll get all of this started tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern time with our bowl <laughs> session, uh, special and Marshall and Louisville follow. Second half coming. Gino Gadouli, four picks in the first half. Can he turn it around? Welcome back to New Orleans where North Texas so far is the better of Gino Gadouli and Cincinnati leading at 17 to 7 at the half. Gadouli has thrown four interceptions one of which was taken back for a touchdown. Are you surprised by all this? Uh, I'm a little surprised because Cincinnati is a high powered offense. They play in a good conference and Conference USA and, and, and to be honest North Texas is taking the fight to them. Gino's got to settle down play within the scheme and Rick Minner had a great point going off at halftime saying we're lucky we're not down 35 to 7 so they're like it. They feel like they're in this game. They got, to, they got to come back strong now. Could come be, back and throw the ball. Could be worse for Rick Minner and company. Here's Rob Stone with the other head coach. Daryl Dickey's team is up by 10 at the break. Coach, what has enabled you to have such balance on offense tonight? Well, I think we've got a good game plan and our kids are playing hard. We've actually been pretty inconsistent. We've had opportunity for some plays. Um, but we've had not executed and we've gotten too many penalties offensively. Our defense has played well, but they got to continue to do so. This is a very good offensive team and we're just going to have to play 30 more minutes of football. Some aggressive play calling premeditated or kind of feeling the moment. Well, uh, it was part of our game plan. We knew they were going to 
have an opportunity to you know put more people up there to stop the run and we were trying to loosen them up a little bit but uh, we just got to try to be balanced on offense ourselves and continue to do so we got to execute a lot better coach thanks for your time good luck second half Pam thank you Rob and North Texas will get the ball first we'll see perhaps some more of that aggressive play calling on offense Jamel Branch a huge hole up the middle and Branch is stopped at the 39-yard line. Good field position for North Texas. Blue Adams made the stop. 36-yard return. ESPN2 game track. If you're just joining us, you missed Cincinnati playing well early. Ty Keith catching a six-yard touchdown pass from Gino Gaduli on their second possession. And here comes the mean green. Brandon Kennedy with a sack and then three more interceptions. This one taken to the house by Jeremy Pearl, a 21-yard interception return. And we heard Coach Dickey talk about the uh, missed opportunities. A 66-yard touchdown pass it would have been a touchdown dropped by George Marshall. And Pearl almost blocked the punt, should have blocked the punt. He whiffed on it. Could have led to some more North Texas points. Galbraith slipping away from tacklers. And that's a very pretty run that picked up maybe a yard. That's great effort, but it, this is huge for Cincinnati's defense now. They need to come out and establish the physical dominance that they're used to they got to come out and take the punch to them right there you see the first half stats and obviously the big one where that little gold arrow is turnovers it's tough to get into any ball game if you're four down in turnovers and the total yards North Texas out gaining Cincinnati Kevin Galbraith by the way only 28 yards on 10 carries in the first half and this is a guy who had almost 1200 yards during the regular season Smith completing it and Kevin Howard has become his favorite receiver in this game. That's a first down on Kevin's fourth catch. Again, they come out in 22 personnel. Two tights, two running backs. Often on the face, looks like a running formation, but it's a passing formation. It's a nice, easy pitch and catch out there. They ran an out cut. They're playing in the three deep. The corner's playing off. You're running out. You throw the ball. You get a first down. Football 101. Those four catches for Kevin, Chris, ties his career high. Four catches in one game. That was a 13-yard gain for a first down. And they are in Cincinnati territory. Smith to Branch gets the block from Marshall to help spring him free. First down and more. A flag comes down as Branch is pushed out of bounds around the 25. I think they got either Thrash or Marshall for holding right there. See, I don't know if Marshall was the guy because his hands were inside, but they're looking, they're pointing a the finger. And if your hands are inside, the guy's pulling away from you, you start to see cloth, you're going to get called every time. If we, if we can get that on a replay, you'll see cloth when Marshall's got the block inside. Holding by the offensive team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. You see the hold right here. See right there's cloth. See that? That jersey starts to stretch a little bit. When that jersey stretches like that, they're going to get you. Thrash does a good job. Everybody does a good job. And the receivers are blocking well downfield. Just got to hide your hands inside a little bit more. Said it was a good block by Marshall. Now we know why. He had a lot of cloth. Yeah. You know, and if you know the, the secret to is, is you wear it, you find out what color jerseys the defense is wearing, and you put the same color gloves on. And that way you don't get called as that. That's not cheating, man. That's finding a way to win. It depends <laughs> on how you look at it. It's getting an edge. <laughs> if you get away with it, it's not cheating, right? That time Marshall did not get away with it. And that's caught. For, by Howard again. That's his fifth catch. That's another 12 yards, and that is a career high. Five catches for Howard, who again came in. He only had seven catches on the season. He is five today. Yeah, and, and Cincinnati's off guard a little bit because they fully expect to come to this football game that North Texas is going to run, 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 run. Well, North Texas said, I got a little something for you. We're going to throw to set up the run. That is the nature of college football when you have a defense that has nine people in the box. You got to throw to loosen it up. Then you start running the football. Now, this is a play they scored on earlier. Two tight ends in for the mean green. Pitch to Galbraith. And he is sprung free. He says, Marshall, give me a block. He gets it, and it's a touchdown. 35 yards. Yep. They got those whoopee sticks going hard now, and, th and they should. And George Marshall, congratulations. You dropped the ball for a touchdown. You had a holding call, but you get the block downfield to spring 
Galbraith for the touchdown. And what happens is Cincinnati is not adjusting their defense when they motion to trips. They're getting outflanked. That means they have nobody on the outside, and he's untouched. They wouldn't have got him if it was flag football. Ninth touchdown of the season for Galbraith, 13th of his career. The extra point by Basil Dua is added. It is 24 to 7 in favor of the Sun Belt Conference champions. Untouched, go 35 yards, Kevin Galbraith. The Mean Green extends its lead. Kevin Galbraith getting congratulations on the sidelines after a 35 yard touchdown run. North Texas scoring its first points not off turnovers, taking the opening kickoff, a 61 yard drive that took two minutes and two seconds. And remember, there was a 10 yard penalty for holding tacked in there, and they still score. And now the deficit is 24 to 7. Kickoff taken by Jones. Is Carl Jones has stopped down at the 30. Let's go down to the field and Rob Stone. Pam, the Bearcats suffered three late first half injuries. The staff is telling me all of them are good enough to play. And we begin with Ladaris Van. Late coming out, right ankle sprain. You see him gingerly walking onto the field right now. He's obviously been cleared. Wide out return man Ty Keith. They're calling it a left shoulder AC sprain, perhaps from all those alligator arms. He's expected to play, and he's out there right now. And linebacker Mike Brown, a left ankle sprain, also expected to play. All right, thanks, Rob. Last game of the season. What the heck, Van and Keith? Two of their more valuable players on offense. Gadouli finding Keith for the first down as he tumbles into North Texas territory. Right, see, that's what you need to do. You need to throw the ball down the field to loosen them up a little bit. Then you can go back to your screens and get McCleskey involved in the game. But don't forget now, Cincinnati's a no-huddle team. They have the ability to go hurry up. Being down 24-7, there should be no panic in this offense. 22 yards on that play. Four catches for Keith so far. Let's see if that helps the duel to get that confidence back. A little pump. He's got Olinger on the sideline. He's well covered, so he just throws it well out of bounds. Yeah, see, now, there was a miscommunication. He thought Olinger was going to run the takeoff. Olinger pulled up. Gino looked for him to run deep, so he threw it away. See, right there. See, he's looking at the coach saying, what? What was that play? You've got to take off and go. You're going to hitch and go. You got to go. It's not a hitch and stop. It's a hitch and go. Go. Olinger, a senior. Obviously, this is the last game of the season. I think that they would kind of be on the same page by now. Yeah. So things not clicking for this Cincinnati offense, which has been poked all year. And that is not much happening up the middle as McCleskey is stopped by Daryl Daniels. Yeah, Daryl does a good job of defeating the blocker. Tackling high, seeing what you hit, and letting his mean green team come and get some. So Darrell slips inside, beats the block one on one, and here come the guys running into the football. That's aggressive defense, that's team defense, that's winning defense. Daniels, one of 10 players to be first team All Sun Belt Conference this year. Third and nine for the Bearcats. Five DBs in, it's the fifth interception thrown by the Dooley. Cody Spencer that time picks him off. What a terrible game for the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, and that 15 yards to it. And it frustration all over the place. It is mean green defense all the way around. Five picks by five different guys. So Cody Spencer, I talked about in the first half about playing zone defense. In order to be an effective zone defensive team, you got to be disciplined in your drops, and you got to get a break on the football. His eyes were on Gadouli. Gadouli telegraphed the pass. Cody Spencer does a good job catching the ball at the highest point with his hands and turns into a running back. Then Cincinnati in their frustration. Right there, give me the personal, personal foul. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds by the original offensive team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run for stack. They're coming down here. If you're, if you're, if you're being green, uh, you go right for that throat. I mean, right now, you bury him. You got a wounded animal. You take him out. That means go to the end zone. Go to the end zone right now. Very much that frustration, as you mentioned, Chris, getting 15 more yards. And we saw Gadouli on the sideline. He was actually being talked to by George Murray 
who is also a sophomore, the backup quarterback, trying to calm his guy down a little bit. Yeah. This has been and a nightmare of a game for him. It is, and, and he's got to you get his composure. He's a competitor. Now, it, you think about it now. If you're not getting anything happening with him, you have nothing to lose. You give George Murray maybe the shot to come into play. But Gino's the guy, the horse that you rode to this bowl. You ride him all the way through. We'll see what happens. Murray, a slash guy. We saw him take one snap as a quarterback earlier in the game. He pitched it out. Murray just one for five on the season throwing the ball. He is on the sidelines, and he did try to calm Gino down. North Texas' best starting position of this game. They're on the 36. Smith running for his life, and he completes it. Now, now incomplete as it is dropped late by Jeff Moonshot, one of his tight ends. And I told you earlier the tight ends don't get many passes. Moonshot only two catches on the season. Antoine Peake was the guy chasing Andrew Smith and a motion penalty against North Texas. Now Marshall took off downfield a little bit quick. Nice little setup, had three receivers to one side, tried to isolate the tight end off the bootleg. Had him open. Got to hold your water, though. Meaning, wait. Wait. <laughs> Be patient. It's North Texas mean green offense. Talk about how good the defense is. The offense, ranking-wise, is just really Awful, Chris. 115th out of 117 Division I A teams in total that is offense. Klein, second down. Yeah, but, but see, what they're doing, though, is that they, they're, they're establishing the run in the pass. And when you establish the run in the pass, you put a defense on its heels. You keep them guessing. The play action works. And if you're running football team, there's no better friend than the play action pass. Tweet, you mentioned the last two games of the breakthrough season and let Smith air it out a little bit more. Obviously doing it today and it's working out. Galbraith trying to get around the corner. He cannot as he is dragged out of bounds by Franklin Calico. Franklin Calico does a nice job playing the safety position, playing about seven yards. Still, still playing a run. He does a good job of open field tackle on a guy that's hard to tackle in open field. Galbraith. Calicott, a junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, starting today because Doug Monahan is still bothered by the high ankle sprain. Starting at that strong safety spot for the Cincinnati defense. We're almost at two-down territory if we don't get it right here for North Texas. Kicker doesn't have the range from 50 in two-down territory. It is third and eight. As it do is long, by the way, is 44 yards as a field goal kicker, and that is picked off. Could be a touchdown as Zach Norton goes all the way into the end zone. Maybe the break Cincinnati needed 68 yards and a score. Flag is down. If this holds up, that will be the second interception for a touchdown for Norton this season. Ah. In. It's not going to hold up. Possibly. He had a 30-yard interception for a touchdown against East Carolina in their last game. Well, the white team, 10 yards from the spot, first down. Yep, so it does indeed take away that touchdown. So, again, not a very smart play. Why? Because your guy's in a track meet down the sidelines. You don't block from anybody from behind. Now here, Cincinnati does a good job of playing their zone defense. They're running to the route. They take away the curl. He tries to force it. Corner does a great job of jumping underneath the route, taking the pick, and going the distance. Zach Norton does a good job of reading and get a great break on the football and a mental error by Cincinnati. When the guy's in the track meet, he has one guy to beat. Don't block anybody. Please, get away from everybody. So that's a huge mistake. Instead of being a 24-14 potential, as McCluskey gets around everybody, and he is smacked down around the 16-yard line by Craig Jones. You see, I, I'm not so sure McCluskey wasn't supposed to hand that ball off. But he saw an opening, he made a good decision. It's almost like a quarterback running the option. You know, make a decision, either hand it off or keep it. Now, I don't know what the pump fake's for. You know, you're not going to fool too many people if, if, if they have some brains in the green helmets because you can't throw the ball, obviously, 15 yards down the field. And a little dangerous, too, when you get the ball up in the air like that. The Dooley hit out of bounds around the 15. Some of the Cincinnati fans looking for a late hit. 
And there's a mis miscommunication right there. That's a broken play. Gino does a good job, though, of getting a little bit out of nothing. A gain of one, second and nine for the 15. See the penalty on the run back here. Let's see if it's right there. No, it makes no sense. Why? Why? The guy's trotting into the end zone. Use your head, guys. A mental errors. Jamar Enzor, the middle linebacker, but that would have been a touchdown anyway. Instead, Cincinnati has to punch it in the old-fashioned way. Booker Van, nothing. As the mean green defense continues to be stingy. Yeah, and that's that's Brandon Kennedy. And I know Cody Spencer made the play, but as a linebacker, you can't make plays Booker if your Van. nose tackle or your inside defensive tackle does not eat up blockers. I made a living because I had good nose tackles. Mark Spindler, Jerry Ball, Ted Washington. They let me make tackles while they ate up blockers. Brandon Kennedy not only makes tackles, he eats up blockers. You better not eat too many more of them. It'll be 320. <laughs> Third and eight. Kennedy again, 5'10", about 3'10". Underneath pass completed to McCleskey, and he is short of the first down as he only got up to the 10-yard line. And Luke Condor does a good job, and I talked Nobody about defending the screens. How do you stop it? Well, if your defensive lineman turn and pursue the ball like Luke did right there, you're going to make an effective team an ineffective screen team. It's a great job of turning, pursuing, and chasing the ball here down from behind. Good job, Luke. And because of that, Jonathan Ruffin has to come in, and the Metairie, Louisiana native going after his 12th straight field goal. This is from 29 yards out. And Ruffin, who has an entire cheering section, across the way from us, hits. He's now nine for nine from 29 yards in, playing his last collegiate game, a town or two over from his hometown. Cincinnati trails it 24 to 10. The Mean Green certainly on the rise today with a 24 to 10 lead over Cincinnati. Here in New Orleans where beverages are Easily available, shall we say? No matter where you go, Jonathan Ruffin with a 29-yard field goal following an interception and a 51-yard return by Zach Morton. It should have been a touchdown, but kind of negated it. Taken by Jamel Branch around the one. Branch returns it up to the 28-yard line. Tomorrow night, two of the top quarterbacks in the country lead their respective teams in the 2002 GMAC Bowl on ESPN2. We all get to see Byron Leftwich one more time for Marshall, take on Dave Ragone in Louisville. For more on our upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com, keyword schedule. And if you get excited about future NFL quarterbacks, watch that game because there's two of them in there also. Marshall has a great wide receiver in various squats. A lot of credit to Darius for Byron's success. My football's a team game. And last year's game was terrific as Marshall took on East Carolina, both teams scoring in the 60s. So that should be fun tomorrow night on ESPN2. Four receivers in for North Texas. Andrew Smith threw an interception on his last pass. And this time he is bottled up, breaks away from a tackle or two, and picks up maybe a half yard. This is the New Orleans Bowl second annual coming your way from the Superdome with North Texas and its defense. How about five interceptions of Gino Gadouli passes? Five interceptions by Cincinnati quarterback, by the way, one off the school record set back in 1972. And he is one interception away from tying Mike Shoemaker's infamous record set against Xavier. 30 years ago. Marshall overthrown for him. And what Cincinnati's doing now, they're coming with a little bit more pressure. They're playing man to man. They're not going to play any zone. They're going to play man to man, try to bring pressure and force Andrew to make some bad decisions. Right now, he, you know, he did a good job of throwing that early. Marshall could get it or nobody else. But still, a little change in defensive philosophy from Rick Minner. A little more man defense, put a little more pressure on him. Five receivers in now for Andrew Smith. And he keeps it. He doesn't get much, maybe a yard. As the Cincinnati defense, Antoine Peek is all fired up. 
Antoine did a good job. Now there's a reason why North Texas goes five wide. Either the ball's got to come on quick or it's a quarterback draw. Right here, you'll see Peek coming from his inside tackle position, beating the tackle inside, making a nice play. Just beat him with speed inside, collapses the pocket, closes the gate in front of the ball, brings down Andrew Smith. That's a good stand by Cincinnati's defense. Now they're starting to get the momentum back. They need to get their quarterback on track. They needed that stop. Brad Cadlebar, meanwhile, his last three punts have all been at least 53 yards in length after a 25-yard shank first time out. And that's another good one as Keith retreats back to his 15, and he goes down on his 15. About four flags flying yep. in the vicinity of the tackle. Yep, that's that rule that's going to be reviewed at the end of the season, the halo rule. You know, it's unfair for the cover guy. Why? Because he's got to stop, give the guy a chance. He's stopping his momentum. The cover guy can make a highlight film out of him because the guy has to stop his feet. But I understand it, but it's unfair for the cover guy. That's a great kick and a good decision to catch the ball. That's Jamel Branch, the return guy for North Texas, who violated the halo rule. Four punts now, at least 50 yards for the North Texas punter. We'll see what Gino does when we come back. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. And by Subway. Fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway. Eat fresh. Back in New Orleans. All American consideration perhaps for number 92. That's what the Mean Green guys would like for Brandon Kennedy, their big defensive tackle. Sunbelt player of the year. And McCleskey, unable to get things going, only picks up about a yard on that carry. We got Chris Hurd coming again. And I'll tell you, when he comes, he brings his hips. You bring your hips, you get big hits. Bring your hips, bring your feet, right? Yep, and you get big hits. And that time he did a nice job of filling the hole. Brandon Kennedy forcing the ball, beating the scoop block, getting penetration, forcing the ball. Chris Hurd filling it up. It's why Mean Green is good defense. They play gap sound. Gary DeLokes, the defensive coordinator. Boy, what a job he has done with this football team. Second and nine. The dually looking downfield for Olinger. And he gets it. Olinger able to go up and get it over Walter Priestley. That's where height advantage comes in. He uses body like a basketball player for Coach Bob Huggins. Cagers, what he does is he uses body to position away from Priestley, boxes him out, and does a good job. And Gino, that a way to throw the football, young man. Let her rip. You have nothing to lose. It's a great job by Johnny O to bring that ball in and concentrate, using his body to box out Priestley. And a play that, boy, Gadouli certainly needed that one after he struggled so far in this game with the five picks. That's a 55-yard completion. They're down to the 18. Kleski might have lost a half a yard as we take it down to Rob Stone. Rob. Well, guys, I've been watching Gino Gadouli on the sidelines and his demeanor, real quiet, kind of a loner, if you will, not talking to his to his linemen, talking to his skill guys when the defense is on the field. And even after that big pass play, he was kind of going right to the line and no congratulations type of thing. I'm not asking him to be a cheerleader, Chris, but do you need your quarterback to be a little more involved, a little more pep up to talk to your boys on that sideline? I think you need to be a leader, Rob, on the sideline when things aren't going well. But what he has to do on the field, he's got to concentrate, get his head to the sideline since there's no huddle offense, get the play, communicate it to his boys. Struggling one touchdown and then five interceptions. And that one is lifted high. Good catch by Dennis Hart, the tight end. Go up and get that one. Again, another variation of the screen. That's about the fourth different screen pass type look we've got from UC tonight. Didn't give it time to set up, though. Again, disciplined zone defense will prevent screens. If you can get a team in man-to-man, -man, usually the man-to-man -man defense is better to run the screens because you run off the DBs and their backs are turned. Zone defense, backs are to the quarterback. They get a read and break on the football. Did a great job that time, Chris. Now it's third and eight from the 16. Four receivers in for the Bearcats. See right here, when the center starts pointing, he's pointing to the Mike linebacker. That's which way you slide your defense if he comes. And Gadouli, that is way high, and a huge hit. Jeremy Pearl laid into Ladaris Van. Now Jeremy Pearl for not being a starter, playing against his four widespread type offense, has played a heck of a football game tonight. 
Gino left it a little high, leaving his boy Ladaris out to dry. Now, Ladaris had alligator arms early in the first half. I'll give him credit. He went up and tried to get that one at least. Jeremy, again, a break on the football. Jonathan Ruffin, who hit from 29 last time out, going for his 13th straight field goal. This is a 33-yarder, and Ruffin knocks it through. Well, Jonathan Ruffin, he wanted at least 76 tickets coming in. Something to cheer about, at least for his family. Cincinnati cheerleader, something to cheer about. Jonathan Ruffin with that 33-yard field goal has broken his own school record. He's now made 13 straight field goals. He set a Cincinnati record by knocking in 12 straight two years ago in 2000. What a terrific career this young man from Metairie, Louisiana has had. Second team All-Conference USA, the Groza Award winner two years ago. Patrick Cobbs gets the Ruffin kickoff. They've had a lot of room up the middle on these kickoff returns, and look at Ruffin make the stop. Kicker getting in on that tackle. Chris? Yeah, uh, a good job by Jonathan. I'll tell you, for being a kicker, that's, that's, that's not bad. At least he didn't try to do the slide soccer tackle where you come in with your legs. <laughs> Oh, you got to got to bring it back now all sides, but they're not going to take the plane. But what they're doing is they're running middle return and Cincinnati is not aware of where the blockers are coming from. The blockers are coming, knocking them inside out. And here's Jonathan forcing the ball. Good job. Good field. Position. That's it. Don't shy away from contact. Hold on for dear life. He does hold on for dear life and makes a play. Good job, Jonathan. Did he bring his feet? Close no, the he didn't bring his feet. He tried to close the gate. I'll tell you, he was effective, though. That's all that matters. Great job by Ruffin, who might have saved the score on that play. First down on the 47-yard line of Cincinnati. Golf with a little shake and bake. Picks up about three yards. Primetime football coming your way Saturday and Sunday. First at 8.30 Eastern, we got the Cowboys and the Eagles for you. Kick off at 8 Eastern time. They'll kick off our coverage with NFL primetime. Then Sunday at 8.30 Eastern, it's the Super Bowl champion Patriots taking on the Jets. Also available on ESPN Deportes. You can watch NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern before this game. ESPN and ABC, your proud and exclusive home for primetime football. Eagles have clinched the NFC East. Now they're looking for that all-important home field advantage. Yeah, you're going to see a new gear with that Jets Patriots. The guys are fighting for playoff lives. It's a new ball game. Two football games for you Saturday and Sunday night amidst all the bowl stuff. There's a reverse to Kevin Howard, and that is snuffed out nicely. Good play by Andre Frazier. Again, Andre showed me a lot tonight. And one thing he's shown me is discipline, playing his responsibility. And a good job of holding, staying back at home, and making a nice open field tackle on a wide receiver. It's a good job for a defensive end to bring a guy down in the open field. Frazier was his all-freshman Conference USA last year. He's a former walk-on who is now making his mark as a sophomore defensive end. That was a loss of one yard, so it's third and eight. They give it to Galbraith, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Daryl Ransom that time coming in, and this Cincinnati defense is stiffening up here in the second half. Yeah, you, you know, you can't play it too close to the vest now. When you're in field position, at least take some shot downfield that's a safe pass where you can throw it out either to the guy or out of bounds because you have a chance to, to move the football and get some type of field position. Third and eight, and you're running the ball. you got 255 in the third quarter. You're starting to play close to the vest. A couple of field goals now to get back in this game. They trailed 24 to 7 after Kevin Galbraith scored on more Texas's first possession of this second half. They have, the defense has done well since. Cad Labar with four straight 50 yard punts. That time he hangs it up nicely. Can they cover it? Oh, what a play! Cincinnati's going to get it at the one yard line because Andy Blunt made a heck of a play. Yeah, Andy did make a heck of a play. Why? Because he's aware of where he is on the football field. Is able to gather the ball in and do a little tightrope on the goal line. It's, yeah, see, knowing where you are in the football field, realizing where he is, gets a little help. That's a good play by that young man right there, forcing this boy and not letting him go into the end zone. Andy Blunt also plays on the basketball team in North Texas. Let's go to Rob Stone. 
Fan, we're joined now by Neil Perry, a safety at San Jose State. And you'll remember his, his dramatic story two years ago, broke a leg on special teams, had to amputate the leg, a lot of national recognition and tension this year on your quest for a comeback. Let's talk, though, about why you're here today. The New Orleans Bowl brought you in. Why? Uh, they just started a, an award. They're given a most inspirational player. They sent out a, a thing to all the conferences in the NC, NCAA Division One, and um, you know, saying you know somebody that inspires people. And uh, I wrote an essay, and they said you know they picked me for the uh, award as, as a unanimous decision. So they flew me out here, and I brought my dad with me. So we're having a good time out here. <laughs> you can't have you can't but have a good time, New Orleans. Your goal this season was to get back on the field. Obviously, there was a lot of litigation. You've been cleared to play, but there's been a setback. Tell us kind of your game plan and your timeline right now to get back on the field. Well, my game plan is just to keep trying as hard as I can, you know, just keep working and, you know, but uh, I'm going to have to have surgery again. Actually, right when I get home from this trip, I got to go have surgery, but uh, hopefully I can get everything taken care of and get back on the field next year. We'll see you out there in 2003. Definitely. Thank Good luck, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Next, Rob, as McCleskey gets his second carry on this as a flag comes down. And I tell you, Neil Perry about to face his 23rd surgery, Chris, a very courageous young man trying to get back on the football field. He is courageous. And he epitomizes what inspiration is for a football player and outstanding. That'll carry over in his everyday life. And you take a look at the penalty, and it's the guy that's been causing havoc all day. It was on Brandon Kennedy. He had a chance to get in there and make a tackle in the backfield. Actually, the center made, uh, did a nice job of holding Brandon Kennedy to keep him out. Take the penalty, you get about a six-inch penalty as opposed to giving Holy up the safety. On the offense, half the distance for Pete today. You see right there, there's a hold on the guard, McGee. Does a good job of holding him because if he gets through there, that's a safety. And realizing where you're on the football field, you give up six inches as opposed to giving up the safety. Smart play. If you're beat inside, he's got to get some help from the center. His center's got to chip over, chip Kennedy to him to give him a shot because Kennedy's in that gap shooting it. He has no chance to block it. It's too quick. No way one guy can do it. That's a 17th penalty in this game. And boy, Kleski just got it out of the end zone on that run. John Ryan making the stop as we saw Kennedy getting his, uh, his a little equipment repair yeah. over on the sideline for now. Well, and, and his replacement comes in and does a good job in Donovan Wright. Watch Donovan Wright's getting penetration. And what happens is North Texas beating these guys off the football. Donovan Wright gets in there, forces the ball to cut back. And Chris Hurd has made a lot of places on the spot. So McCleskey gets it out to the one yard line as we're inside a minute here in the third quarter. Third and 10. Oh, well, they're throwing out the end zone. The Dooley completes it to Olinger, and that's a first down. Priestley makes the stop. That's a big play to get him out of harm's way. Yeah, Marquise Bolton was playing a little soft right there. There's, it was a one receiver route. They max protected to give Gino all the time in the world. And it's a great job by Olinger of running to the sticks and past the sticks just in case he'd have to come back for football against a soft coverage. Norton's got to take a little bit. If he sits it down, man, break on the football. Got a bad break. His feet were stuck in quicksand. Get your feet out of quicksand and make a break. And it said it was a 14-yard gain and a big, big first down as Cincinnati tries to claw back. The Dooley side-arming it, and they're going to call that a penalty as Cody Spencer was tight on the coverage on Richard Hall coming out of the backfield. Now, now see, Cody has a great break on the ball, but he has to have field awareness. And what he did was he hooked. He had a hook arm. He didn't have to hook arm. He had great position. He, he came with the long arm across the front of the body, knocked the ball down, but he threw the hook arm. Spot foul, automatic first down. See Cody Spencer right here. He's got a good break on the football. Don't hook arm. See, he got that hook arm on him. You don't have to. If you have a break on the ball like that, a position like that, you have to have awareness not to hook him. Got that left arm on him, and that's now the 18th penalty of this game. First down from the 18. The Dooley, oh, that's a completion to his tight end, Dennis Hart, for another Bearcat first down. That's a good job by Gino. That's a well-thrown ball because McGee had great coverage on Hart. That's a good catch by, by Hart. He did a good job of using his hands, not catching the ball with his chest. Use his hands. Hart getting exclusive playing time at that tight end spot because A.J. Lucius is out. He hurt his knee, his left knee, in a practice on Saturday. And Hart has played well so far as the tight end. That's it. The third quarter comes to a close. 
So the mean green of North Texas taking a 24-7 lead early in this third quarter. A couple field goals make it 24-13. But the mean green playing mean, five interceptions so far in the New Orleans Bowl. Fourth quarter coming up. the second annual New Orleans Bowl from the Superdome. The North Texas Mean Green making their second trip. They lost last year here to Colorado State 45 to 20 and so far big time turning the tables on Cincinnati. But the Bearcats trying to get back in this game down 24-13. Gino Gadouli completes it to Booker Van, one of his running backs for another first down. Yeah, so Gino's starting to get confidence now. Why do I say that? Because he's throwing a ball in tight coverage, yet he's putting it where only his guy can get it. That time Hurd had good coverage on Van, but Gino put the ball where he needed to. Now, there's got to be a little bit of sense of urgency. No panic, just a little bit more urgency from Cincinnati to get going. And that's the advantage of running in the no-huddle offense. You can line up and you play call and adjust it at the line of scrimmage and get playing. He's distributing the football well now. Van only had two catches during the regular season. Got that one for a first down on the 45. Play action. Plenty of time to Gouley rolling, looking for Van, and again, it's too high. Yeah, he's got to go up with two hands to get the ball. Remember, he's a little bit dinged up, Van. Hurt yeah, earlier angle, in this game. Arm, so that's, that's the thing. All right, here we go. All right. I get excited. I'm sorry. Here we go. Alligator arms. <laughs> ESPN2 game track. Gino Gadouli has five interceptions. That is a career high and one off the Cincinnati all-time record for most in one game. Penalties, it's not been a pretty one, folks. Nine apiece for each side, but the points off turnover so big. North Texas, 17 points off those interceptions. That's a great point, Pam. The reason being that you can get turnovers, but what do you do once you get the turnover? Do you, do you fold your opportunity or you capitalize on your opportunity? North Texas can able to do that. Gino Gadouli, you mentioned that he has more confidence. It's borne out in his numbers. 7 of 11 here in the second half after a very forgetful first half. Seven yards for Richard Hall on that play. Richard Hall is quite a story. 23 years old. Originally signed with Ohio State, but uh, never got academically eligible and finally ended up in Cincinnati. He's a sophomore and will be the feature back next year when McCluskey is no longer at Cincinnati. He has fresh legs in there because he came in there and put his head down. Hey, Tyler Casey, a nice little face right in number four. Good power run by Richard Hall. Former high school player of the year from the state of Ohio. Third down. The Dooley getting more time here in the second half. That one's good enough for another first down to who else but Richard Hall. Again, they're, they're doing a good job of staying with their offense. They're not panicking. That time, Gino went to his outlet receiver. And, they, they, you know, they're comfortable coming back. Look, they out outscored opponents 117 to 50. They're comfortable in the fourth quarter. There's no panic. They know they have a high-powered offense. They know they have ability to put points on the board in a hurry. That was a first down for Hall. First and 10. No play. As they have it on the 42-yard line of North Texas. ACC officiating crew. Dead ball, false start. <laughs> On the offense, five yard. Richard Hall screwed up his call there for a little, yeah, little bit. Yeah. So don't give me the ball. That's the umpire's job. <laughs> so that pushes him back five yards. Green, Rick Minter's ball club playing in its third straight. Bowl game. If you take a look at the total yards, Cincinnati has taken control here in the second half after North Texas went 61 yards on its opening play of this half, scored a touchdown. Since then, there's been an interception and two, three and outs. All again, starting to take over on this drive. Another first down for the sophomore from Cincinnati. Again, a good job by the Cincinnati offense lineman getting out and getting in space. Richard Hall does a good job not getting tripped up, running with high knees, keeping his feet elevated so he doesn't get tripped. Now you're going to hear a good hit now. Ah, that's football right there. Richard Hall's a tough guy again, fresh legs. I like that, huh? Yes, I do. I love it. Taylor Casey and Jonas Buckles sandwiching him on that hard hit. Second and five. 
Dooley. That's almost intercepted, but that would not have been Gadouli's fault as Olinger could not hang on to it. That's a good strike by Gino, one that he can, he can feel confident. He's starting to loosen up a little bit, delivered the ball. Johnny O, Olinger's got to bring the ball in. That's a well-thrown football. It's a play-action pass. They've been running the ball a little bit successful. That's Tyler Casey sticking on the tight end a little bit too long. Olinger was open in the curl. It's one you got to bring in. That was Walter Priestley who got a hand on it. Third and five on this drive. It's already gone over five minutes and it's chewed up 62 yards of artificial turf. Nothing on that play as Hall is cut down in his tracks by Craig Jones, who now has nine tackles. Yeah, Craig Jones did a great job of reading run when, when Cincinnati's been in that formation. Split backs out of 20 personnel, two backs, no tight ends. But Brandon Kennedy, again, causing havoc, getting penetration. Now, you, I don't like the roadblock. I like the hit, but I don't like the roadblock. That went out That went out with Jim Thorpe in the Carlisle days. Come up and wrap him up. It's a long time ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Yep. Fourth and five, they're going for it. From the 37. And it is complete, but short of the first down. A terrific tackle on Richard Hall by Chris Hurd. Yeah, that, you know, that's on Richard Hall. He's got to get to the sticks. He's got to get to the sticks and run to the sticks. He did not, and North Texas gets the ball when we return to New Orleans. The Thunder Sticks out in full force. This North Texas defense with a nice stand. Cincinnati had the ball for five minutes and 52 seconds. 12 plays, 62 yards, and got Nada out of it as they failed to convert on the fourth down. Keeping his feet. He's the fullback, Michael Hickman, who picked up about three. Yeah, he's played a nice game tonight. I've been watching him. He's doing a great job of blocking. He finishes blocks and he puts people on his back and they throw him a bone once in a while. That quick hitter. This is the fullback belly play. Buddy Manu Imano, Michael Hickman gets it up inside. Had a nice little run earlier. It's a good three yard game. That's North Texas style. Keep that clock running. Three carries for 22 yards. And Primarily a blocking back, getting a lot of touches today. Four receivers now, second and seven. And they're throwing it. Smith sings it out, and it is incomplete. Kevin Howard could not bring it in. And Smith has been throwing almost exclusively to Howard, who gets up limping over to the sidelines. He's been thrown to him almost exclusively the last couple of quarters of this game. Well, when you have confidence in a guy and you have success with a guy, success breeds confidence, you're going to keep going to him. Although that wouldn't have been much of a game. It would have been about a two-yard game. It stops the clock for UC. And Howard with career highs, five catches, 78 yards in this game, but he is out momentarily. Third and seven now on the 37. North Texas is 2 of 11 on third downs. Will be three of 12 after that fruitless run by Kevin Galbraith. Taiwan Hagler with the stop. I'm going to show you something. Why why this is run? Now, this is something to look for when you're watching bowl games. These guys are deeper than the quarterback. The reason is so they can get the ball at depth so they can read the play. You see Hickman come here and get a block. But the reason that's a run is because the depth of the backs, the quarterback was in front of the backs. Anytime there's a shotgun and the quarterback's in front of the backs, it's a run. If, they're, if, the, if the backs are in front of the quarterbacks, it's passed because they're up for pass pro, then to check down or to get out in a route. And we're going to see a kicker who's done a great job tonight. Brad Padlubar hangs that one up, and the fair catch is taken by Ty Keith. Cincinnati takes it over at the 27. That was a 34-yard kick. Since he has it. Mean Green wearing all green for the first time in history with a 24-13 lead over Cincinnati. We got some more green coming your way tomorrow night on ESPN2. Byron Leftwich and his Marshall Thundering Herd. Last collegiate game for Byron as they take on Louisville. We'll see a very good quarterback. Dave Ragone going for Louisville tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time. For more on upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com. Word schedule. Incomplete. Looking for DeMarco McCleskey. Conference USA teams like Cincinnati here at the New Orleans Bowl. TCU 
the co-champion of Conference USA going to the Axe of Liberty Bowl to take on Colorado State, the Mountain West champ. Louisville goes to GMAC. Tulane, lucky dogs get to go to Honolulu. Yeah. The Niagara Foods Hawaii Bowl on Christmas Day and Southern Miss to the Houston Bowl. And TCU lost to Cincinnati during the regular season, but there is no tiebreaker in Conference USA, so they are co-champions, and they selected TCU to go to the first pick bowl, which is the Liberty Bowl, the Axe at Liberty Bowl. Gadouli up top for Olinger, almost picked off that hung up just a skosh too long. Craig Jones almost picked it. Yeah, Craig Olinger. Jones did a good job because he, he, was, he McGee was looking for him to help him deep. Craig Jones bit up a little bit. And Olinger does a nice job of turning in the defensive back, coming back and, not, and preventing the interception. Gino let his arm twist a little bit on that one. Under through Johnny O. Johnny O, throw it up for grabs. He's got the height advantage. Let him go get it. Olinger has been his favorite big play guy throughout the season. Olinger is actually a state record 22 touchdown catches when he was a senior in high school in Hazard, Kentucky. The dueling over the middle this time underneath stuff to McCleskey out of the backfield. Picked up about seven short of the first down and here comes the punt team yeah, again. I, see, I think Gino, he had all kind of great pass protection by the offensive line. He had all kind of time. He kind of forced that throw. He could have let that maybe pump the underneath throw. It, and he had his receiver open on the in cut where he could have got the first down. Because they're only rushing three. But instead he went underneath to McCleskey and he was stopped about four yards short. Here's Chet Urban for his 40 punt. Jamel Branch. Wants no part of it. Backs away and it takes a terrific Cincinnati bounce. And it's touched around the 15-yard line. Downed at the 13. That's a 51-yard punt for Irvin. So Cincinnati needs to get the ball back. They're down 24-13. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Louisiana's Audubon Golf Trail. Great golf, among other things. And by Ford. With 150 million vehicles sold, Ford is America's number one choice. back inside the Superdome for the second annual New Orleans Bowl as North Texas takes over on its 16. Worst field position for them since way back in the first quarter. Cincinnati needs to get a stop quickly. Trailing by 11. Galbraith tries to break outside, slips one tackle, turns the corner for the first down. Nifty running by Kevin Galbraith, picks up, picking up 13. That's yeah, a great job of vision and also speed to get to the corner. What he does, does a nice design cutback. As soon as he gets the ball, he cuts back. Uses an underutilized weapon, in my opinion, the stiff arm. Keeps the defender off of him, shows speed to the corner. Which you'd like to see, even though it's, it's you have time left, you'd like to see him stay in bounds and keep that clock moving. Especially if you're North Texas, who's been shut down so far the second half by the Cincinnati defense. In fact, they have the last four possessions, an interception, and then three three and outs. So their first first down since right before the interception. First and ten. And the 30. Walbert again, this time cutting the other way, keeping those legs going. Seven more yards for Kevin. A look at what he's done earlier in this game. The burst of speed, nice little juke. He's got 89 yards on 18 carries and a 35-yard touchdown. That's it right there. And this is the play we just saw, Chris. Yeah, what he does now, he decides to become the, the hitter rather than the hit. He puts his head down, gets yardage. Good power run, keeps his feet moving. It's Jason Hunt who was hanging on to him. It was a seven-yard run, second and three. This time, Hunt is able to close the gate, maybe? Is yep. that right? Now, using yep. the proper yep. context. Yep. Did, did a good job. He wanted to get a little revenge. He didn't want to get run over again. That time, he made the conscious decision to run through the ball carrier. Don't run to the ball carrier. You run through the ball carrier. And he did that, and it was a uh, loss of a yard on that play. Third down. This is a big, big down for Cincinnati, because right now, they're in a two-possession ball game. And the way North Texas plays defense, you, you're looking at that clock a little bit. It's down to 740 right now. They can't afford to let North Texas get a first down here. They have to get off the field. 
in this third and three. The play clock winding down. Boy, Smith just got it off in time. A little play action. And he's taking it himself, and Smith runs for the first down. So the quarterback keeping it all the way, and that's a big first down. He picked up six. Yeah, see, that was that was a designed run. They don't want to stop the clock. They gave him the option to get outside, let him use his speed. And again, George Marshall, the great Mark Levy, used to preach to the Buffalo Bills when I was part of that team. Start every meeting with receivers blocking downfield. Even though George dropped the pass, now he's done a whale of a job blocking downfield, playing team football, doing what he has to do for his team to succeed. And helping Smith pick up that crucial first down, keeps the ball in the Mean Green's hands. Patrick Cobbs now spelling Galbert. Gets maybe a yard before Trent Cole is bottling him up inside. Yeah, scrap iron. That's, you know, if you're under named Scrap Iron by your coaches and you're a tough guy, and Trent Cole's a tough guy because he plays defensive tackle at 225 pounds. He is a tough guy. He's strapped, he's strapped tight. Just a sophomore. He's been starting since game number four against Temple, and Rick Minter really credits that change, putting him in the starting lineup, is starting to turn this defense around, one of his better moves on the season. And he started to take more control of the defense personally. When you play inside like that at 225, you're a tough guy. Two tight ends in on the pitch. That's Branch again coming around, and the wide receiver is dragged down. That's a three-yard loss. Derek Adams right there. A nice job by Derek Adams of defeating his blocker, laying out, tackling a tough open field ball carrier. Branch, good job, big man. Adams is a senior from Solon, Ohio, outside of Cleveland. As we go inside of six minutes, here's another big third down, Chris, third yeah. and 10. And again, I look for him to keep it on the ground and keep the clock moving now. Watch Andrew Smith here. He's going to, if he's smart, he's going to let the play clock go ahead and go all the way down to one before he snaps the ball. That's it. He's looking over his defense. We've got five seconds. Got it down to two before he gave it to Cobbs, and Cobbs will not get the first down. Keeps his feet, and it's taken away! Taken away by Cincinnati's Franklin Collicott, and he's going into the end zone for the touchdown! It's a great job, Cincinnati, a great job. Why? Because you have ball carriers holding him up, securing the tackle. You got somebody in with the, with the knowledge to go after the football outstanding. Cobbs, you got to understand, with there's five minutes to go, they're going to come get the ball. This is a great job of coming in and stealing that football. Gang tackle, get rid of that ball there. Rip it out. That a boy. And take off running. That's excellent. Calicut does a great job of awareness, knowing that the tackle is secure, going for the football. Does a great job of getting it, ripping it out of there, and having the awareness to score. Now we got a ball game, folks. That was a 44-yard return. And if you're a North Texas follower, you got to wonder why the whistle didn't blow, because it seemed like his forward progress had stopped. But it was not a quick whistle. And now Cincinnati going for two, down by five. The Dooley in the end zone, and it's tipped away by the Mean Green defenders. That's Chris Hurd making another big play, this time on Ladera's van. Franklin Collicott did not join Cincinnati team until the end of September. Makes a big play here to get the Bearcats back in this game. Franklin Calicott thrust into the starting lineup because of an injury to Doug Monahan, and he takes advantage of it with that 44-yard fumble return on the strip. And with 5 minutes, 15 seconds left to go, we have ourselves a ball game. Cincinnati, the men's basketball team, is playing over on ESPN right now, just underway against Oregon. And some of those Cincinnati fans might want to switch on back here. As Branch gets the kickoff and is taken down at the 17 where the main green take over. An ESPN primetime NFL doubleheader comes your way this weekend starting Saturday at 8.30 Eastern time when the Eagles take on the Cowboys. Watch NFL primetime at 8 Eastern. Then on Sunday, start your night at 7.30 Eastern with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite, followed immediately by the Jets and the Patriots. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime football, New England, Needing to win this game to keep pace with the first place Miami Dolphins. Miami 9-5, and five, the Pats 8-6 and six on the season. He's he back in the game at running back to go right back to Galbraith. Their senior, 
Guy that understands if you come after the football. No motion in tight end. They're going to run to the trip side. Got two tight ends in. It gets the block, and Galbraith picks it up and runs for the first down. That's 13 yards. They did a nice job here. This is a good play. Why? Watch the tight end come in motion. Now he's going to come back and get a kick out block right here. It's kind of a counter. It's a power row play. They do a good job getting the defensive flow one way. Galbraith with great vision hits the hole. That's a nice kick out block by the tight end for North Texas. And with Randy that run, Gardner. excuse me, with that run, uh, Galbraith has gone over the 100 yard mark. 20 carries now, 101 yards on the day. 16th career time has gone over 100 yards in only two seasons. And Galbraith gets more. Oh, what a pop. He was nailed after about a three yard gain. Adam Roberts with a big, big hit. Take a look at that strip that led to the touchdown. Yeah, this this is two go. plays ago. We'll see if he was down. He lands on top of the. No, his knees aren't down. He lands on top of the back. He could have kept going. He thought he was down, but he wasn't. Hmm. Time North Texas get motions and trips. They get Andre Fraser doubled. They get outside of Andre Fraser. Second and six. Six. Galbraith escapes momentarily. Picks up a Did a good job. The Cincinnati came with a corner blitz. James Julian coming up from his defensive back position. Galbraith throws a little shake and bake, gave him a leg and took it away. He got positive yards. Huge third down for the Bearcats now. They need to get off the field to give their offense a chance to get back on the field because of the strong, strong solid defense that North Texas plays. They have to have some time to work with. Third and four. North Texas just three of 14 on third down, but did get a big one in their last possession that held on the ball momentarily before the fumble return for the touchdown. Well, Smith just got the snap off, and that is completed near the first down marker to Jamel Branch. Let's see where the mark is. Very important mark. 258 left to play in the fourth quarter. Take time now to welcome the men and women in uniform serving in Keflavik, Iceland, watching this telecast on the American Forces Network from inside the Air Force's top three club, Zoomies. We hope you're all enjoying the New Orleans Bowl as well as the holiday season. We thank you for all that you do. They didn't even measure, Chris. That's the first down. Yeah, now, now you got to, if you're Cincinnati, you got three timeouts left. You're going to start using them. A couple of tight ends now. We anticipate North Texas to keep it in Galbraith's hands, and they do. Lost a yard, but time is the biggest enemy of the Bearcats. The flag is down on that play. We got offsides on UC. Oh. That hurts. And Jason Russell is lined up on North Texas side of the ball. Offside. Discipline. Defense. Five-yard penalty repeat the first half. Eleventh penalty called against the Bearcats. Now 88 yards. We see three timeouts apiece left. Rick Minner's team needing a touchdown. Looks they got to get the ball back as Cincinnati burns its first timeout on first and five. Interesting time to take it as the clock was stopped for the penalty, and they're going to talk things over. That first and five coming up after the offsides. We take you down on the field in Rob Stone. Rob. This the first of a record 28 bowl games this season, but lest we forget, there are some bowl games that sadly are no longer with us, including three that these two teams played in the 1940s. So, Pam, Chris, it is bowl pop quiz time. Please put your media guides underneath your desk. All right, we, we go to it. 1946, the Optimus Bowl, and 48, the Salad Bowl, and 49, the Glass Bowl. Where were these three bowl games played? Oh, the, the Glass? Oh, okay. Optimus uh, Bowl, uh, go. No, the Glass. Uh, Houston. Whoa, uh, yeah, you're right. All right, the Salad Bowl, which I love, by the way. It's got to be somewhere in California. Keep going. Is Spielman with you? Is he talking? Come on, Chris, you I guess. Know. Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. and, and, and the Glass Bowl. Spielman, this should be you. Toledo. 
Toledo. You, all right, not bad, guys, but as extra credit, where were the cereal and pasta bowls held? <laughs> At Chris's kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> Trick question. They were oh. never played, but they should have been. Oh, that Rob Stone. <laughs> the salad bowl. I don't remember that one. The infamous. Of course, the glass bowl is the name of the stadium yeah. in which Toledo still plays. We're having Toledo in the, right. um, coming up on ESPN in the Motor City Bowl. The day after Christmas, 5 Eastern time, we will be in Detroit. I'm looking forward to Ford Field. I hear it's That's, a beautiful it's, facility. It's awesome. They did a great job. You feel like you're outside up in that field. Those of you watching Cincinnati and Oregon play basketball, Cincinnati's What's the score? 44-24 Bearcats? My goodness, wow. what an upset that would be. And you are watching your football team make a valiant comeback. Down 24-19 in the New Orleans Bowl second annual. Pam Ward, Chris Spielman, and Rob Stone joining you as Rick Minter's team has gone to a bowl game, third straight year. And they were down in early in the third quarter, 24-7, but are now down 24-19. And the second half has been won by Cincinnati yards wise out gaining North Texas 178 to 130. North Texas has not won a bowl game since 1946. Now yeah, in the Sun Belt Conference is going for its first, first ever. bowl win. They are in their second season of, uh, of participation as a football conference in D1A North Texas in its eighth season of Division 1A. And there's that sound and optimist yeah. bowl that uh, Rob Stone referred to. Yeah, they were uh, participants in those. Outstanding. They have not won since the 46th Optimist Bowl. Here we go for North Texas now. First and five Cincinnati. You're going to have to burn your timeouts. And what you're going to do defensively is run whatever run blitz you have. Get everybody up there. Put one guy out here on a receiver. Come up and get him. You got to go for the football, and if you're if you're North Texas, if you have you got to you got to protect the ball. Don't worry about getting extra yards. If you get tackled, get down, but protect the football. Cincinnati with two timeouts remaining, the first and five following an offsides. Pitch it to Kevin Galbraith, and the senior running back over 100 yards on the game loses some. No, on see, that play. yeah, and, and that, that's a freshman mistake. Why? Go down. You go out of bounds. You stop the clock. They they force Cincinnati or they allow Cincinnati not to use a timeout. Cincinnati saves a timeout. You have 2:19 left, and you lose six yards. If you're going to lose yards, go down, keep the clock running, or force them to burn one. The problem with that being a freshman mistake is Galbraith is a senior. Yes, that's uh, that's that's exactly the problem. His Get down. Second, second year here at North Texas, the most productive two-year stretch for any back at uh, North Texas. Those of you on ESPN2 stay with us. NBA Fast Break follows our football game, but it's second and ten as he lost five on that play and stopped the clock by going out of bounds. Redemption for Galbraith. You betcha. First down and more as he is stopped down near the 40-yard line. Well, he threw a move. I'm going to tell you what. James Julian, he threw a move on James Julian. That's missed tackle number nine for Cincinnati on the night. And watch this. He's going to put him on the highlight film. He says, come on, join my highlight game and shake the bank. Took it away. Then he does a good job of getting downfield, atoning from his freshman air, making a senior play a big play when his team needs it. James, come up and see what you hit, son. It was a 19-yard gain for Galbraith. First and 10 now from the 40 of Cincinnati. Got those two timeouts left, and they're going to have to start burning them soon. Galbraith stopped down. No timeout taken yet by the Bearcats. Now the clock is stopped. We'll look at some of the Cincinnati offensive players wanting the ball back. Marco McCleskey and company want to get it back, but their defense has to come up with a stop. We'll be right back to New Orleans. Chris Hurd telling everybody to get up on their feet and cheer on this North Texas offense interception return in the second quarter by Jeremy Pearl 20 yards for a score five interceptions thrown by Gino Gadouli tonight for Cincinnati uncharacteristically just a horrible first half for the young man Smith the quarterback keeps it gets a block 
A terrific block thrown for him by Matt Bradshaw on Jason Hunt. Boy, Bradshaw, you like that one, Chris? Yeah, it's, it's a great job. Bradshaw kind of sets it up like a bootleg, but there's no way Andrew Smith's going to keep uh, throw the football. Comes back and gets a did not see it coming hit. Does a good job. Now again, he will learn, but you got to get out of bounds to keep the clock moving or, or slide. Don't take the hits. I know you're a freshman. But still get down and get out of bounds. And Bradshaw with that block allowed Smith to get that first down. Yeah, and see these guys right here? Those guys are doing a great job the past two drives. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. They've done a great job all night blocking, getting hat on a hat, finishing. Galbraith goes down in his tracks, loses about one. Jason Hunt comes up with a seven tackle, but we're inside a minute and a half now at 126. Cincinnati time running out on the Bearcats. Cincinnati with a minute 26 left in its season and you have to give credit to this offense for North Texas this current drive nine plays 52 yards eating up three minutes and 49 seconds of clock time and keeping Gino Gadouli off the field. Yeah and, and it's more impressive when you know Cincinnati's coming in understanding that they're going to run the football Cincinnati's going to play their run defense yet they have not been able to stop them. And this has been their bread and butter, the run game, and this guy has buttered the bread, so to speak, Galbraith, and he picks up a little bit too much, too many butter references, but Galbraith keeping the ball as Cincinnati is out of timeouts. They cannot stop the clock. Yeah, North Texas now, all they have to do is take a knee. North Texas has not won a postseason game in 56 years. Wow, what a, what a great win for the program. Daryl Dickey started the year off last year. They didn't know that they, they thought they were going to get fired That's before right. they won that. They, they were 0-5 the to start off last year. Started off poorly this season as well. And they were wondering, you're right, if they would have jobs. If they've eaten up the Sun Belt, just one loss in conference in two years. Kevin Galbraith chewing up some more yardage. And Cincinnati cannot stop the clock. Three straight bowl trips for the Bearcats. A loss in the Motor City Bowl the last two years, and a loss here today to North Texas. Only been in Division 1A this time around for eight years. Daryl Dickey, son of a coach, gets himself a win. A great job for the program. It's an important win for the program, and it gives some credibility to the Sun Belt Conference, beating the co-conference champions of Conference USA. So North Texas, which finished with a losing record overall last year, had to get a flyer from the NCAA even to get into the bowl last year, comes back to the New Orleans Bowl, and they win it. 24-19, Galbraith with 131 yards on the ground and a touchdown, 17 points off turnovers. North Texas takes it 24-19 at the New Orleans Bowl. Coming up next, NBA Fast Break Tuesday for Chris Spielman and Rob Stone. I'm Pam Ward. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Or Texas takes it into Orleans.